Stand by to launch FanStream Sports. Three, two, one. Let's start. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to FanStream Sports. Nothing, nothing but pure sports. This is the JP Show. JP, it is so good to hear you back on the air. Stand by. Now, here's JP. All right, welcome in to a Thursday edition of the J.P. Peterson Show. Nick Eddy's coming to you from my home studio. And J.P. is over at the Valspar Tournament today. That's right. It started today, this morning. Uh, first tee times got going got going over there a couple hours ago. And it's a beautiful day here in Tampa Bay. So you couldn't ask for a better start over there at the Valspar Tournament. So J.P.'s finishing getting set up over there. And he'll join us here uh, in just a little bit. But... Welcome to the show, and of course, welcome to one of the great sport days on the entire calendar. March Madness is here. March Madness is here. This is one of the best days on the sports calendar. Now, last year, I shouldn't say the word unfortunately because, you know, I was on my honeymoon last year, and I missed out on the first day of March Madness, unfortunately, but I'm not on my honeymoon this year. And games start right after this show ends, which is so convenient as I welcome JP in here. And when this show's over, I'm going to park it on my couch and <laughs> save going to my, to, to my uh, softball game later tonight. That's all I'm going to be doing. Well, it is a um, – you should be out here, Nick. This is absolutely fabulous. The weather is perfect. Uh, now, 24 hours from now, we will not be sitting here because it will be a deluge <laughs> Right. Uh, they're expecting a lot of rain tomorrow, so they're going to have to uh, get uh, jump through some hoops on Saturday. It's going to make it an even better day because the Cole Swindell concert, of course, is right across the way here on Saturday. So you'll probably get 36 holes of golf. Or I don't know what they're going to do, but um, you know maybe they'll make it three rounds, maybe have a Monday finish. Don't know, but Friday's weather does not look good, but looks great for Saturday and Sunday. So we'll take three three out of four ain't bad. Is that wasn't that a song by Meatloaf? Or was that two out of three ain't bad? <laughs> This week at the Val Sports, three out of four ain't bad. So, um, yeah, we're sitting here, as you can see behind me, at the Frenchie's poolside deck here, which is a great hangout spot. When you're uh, when you've been walking out there in the sun, you want to sit down, have a cool drink. They got great food here, great drinks. Uh, they got the Frenchie's food, the, the she crab soup, all the good stuff behind me here. So you got that. So this is a great hangout place. There are just uh, places all over this tur- this tournament. To hang out it is an absolutely incredible setup if you don't if you don't like golf if you've never swung a club doesn't matter get your ass out here it's it's absolutely beautiful uh ronnie barber will be hopefully stopping by here today the chair of the tournament who's very busy out here and has been very busy all week and all year uh, getting ready for this tournament we'll talk a little bit about uh what he has brought to this tournament which is um nothing nothing short of a miracle because this, this tournament's gone through a lot over the years and what the PGA tour is going through right now certainly affects the Valspar in a very real way. We talked about this with Bob Herrick the other day. So we'll get into that a little bit. Uh, we got news on Florida state and um, the ESPN situation in terms of their media rights. Um, there've been some lawsuits that have been updated and I've got a piece of information that I think is going to really clarify everything for you and it's the Clemson joining the case has strengthened the case immeasurably and I don't think Miami and North Carolina are far behind because this is is basically it's a done deal and it may be a done deal with very little buyout which is very interesting so we'll get to that uh, the Bolts are at San Jose tonight um, they, they got a big one over the Golden Knights I didn't get a chance to talk about that because we were uh we were taped yesterday, and of course, um, UCF. I'm sorry, USF beats UCF in the high school gym over there. That didn't, that didn't happen, did it? No, that, that no. Did. in a glorious way too. In a glorious way. In a glorious way. I, I saw the uh, the Thundering Herd band went over there. The SoFlo Ra- Rodeo went over there. A game that clearly, by any measure, the Bulls earned a home court to. This nutty ass NIT situation gives UCF an automatic bid, which they did not deserve. And thank God the Bulls took care of business and dispatched your Knights 
like they should be. And um, I didn't get the up. Are they going to play the home game now? Who won last night between VCU and um, uh, what was, who'd they play? There's two V's playing last night. I got to find yeah. out. Or if you guys know in the chat, let to, me know. I'm going to have to look it up because, to be honest with you, the NIT, the NIT now that UCF went out and that game ended, yeah, I think everybody was tuned into that one. And now it's just like, well. Yeah. Eh. Well, as, as far as USF goes, as far as USF you know, we'll, goes, be, to, we'll be tuned into the NIT. And until then, right. you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm a big fan of the NIT. But I'm a big fan of USF. Correct. So we'll see where that goes. It was VCU um, who won, by the way. VCU. So that they – were they the road team? Because if they were the road team last night and, and they won, then they will play at South Florida, if I'm not mistaken. I would think so, yeah. Yeah, if they were the road team last night, then South Florida would get a home game, which is what they yeah, deserve. It, it's on the schedule, it says South Florida versus VCU 730 on Sunday. Where? So, does it have a, doesn't have it, a locale? Uh, it just says South Florida is listed first and then verse. So usually when it's listed like that, that means they're at home. Yeah, um, the US, USF sent home. All right, yeah, we'll figure it, that. That's out. what it looks we'll like. But we'll we'll confirm it throughout the show. Well, that would be awesome because that would be a great way to uh, send um, send them out. Because um, I think after that they they go to a neutral site. It's not New York anymore. They don't play the finals in Madison Square Garden. They moved it to Indy, which was the, about the only allure left of the NIT was to go play yeah, in Madison it, Square Garden. It is it is home this week. It is this, oh, awesome. it is home. That's, That's fantastic. Well, let's pack the place. It's so 7 30 Sunday night. 7 30 on Sunday night. So we'll finish up here at the Valspar, the crown of champion here, and then uh, zip on over to the Yingling Center and catch uh, uh, USF and VCU in the NIT. I mean, is there enough going on here in, in, uh, in the local area? Do we have enough going on right now? I, I, I freaking love it. Like, yeah, ma beautiful. maybe we're not getting football right now, like I said, but. There's just so much news going on. JP, I woke up yesterday. I set the alarm at 5.30 to watch a freaking Dodgers-Padres game because I <laughs> about that? badly wanted to see Major League Baseball that counts on my television, and I tuned in. And, of course, I didn't even check before, but I saw Glasnow was pitching, and I was like, oh, no. Now i got to watch Glasnow pitch. In and, a Dodgers uniform. In a Dodgers uniform, not a Rays uniform. And it made me sad a little bit. I'm not going to lie to see him in a different uniform. Just a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Well, not like we didn't tell you that was coming the day he signed a contract where they had to pay him $24 million in the second year. Remember that? Everybody's like, oh, look, the Rays are spending money. <laughs> oh. I'm like, oh. yeah, right. Yeah, don't, JP, I'll, I'll, right. I'll, have, uh, I'll have thoughts on Stu's comments later. I don't know if you, if you, got, if you got to those, but I haven't yeah, responded to, to them. I, 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 might have to, I might have to put my response to them because I caught wind of them yesterday. I missed when they first dropped. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't. I missed. Uh, I didn't get to read the uh, the yearly. Um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word here. Um, uh, the yearly column where Topkin uh, gives him the latitude to tell us what bagels he likes, what movies he's watching, and we treat him like a beloved owner, like we would treat Jeffrey Vinnick or, or even the Glazers. Um, we, we, you know, we don't mention any of the other horrible things that are going on right now in this boondoggle of a deal. We don't mention any of that stuff, but we gotta, we gotta, you know, we got we, anyway, if you want to react to his comments, feel free. Uh, Peter and I have done so, uh, the floor is yours. You want me to do them right now? I'll do it sure. right now. Sure. I, I just, I was mostly reading the comment where he talked about, um, I'm swallowing more than hard because it's going to lead to real losses this year. Um, and then he kind of says, you know, we don't know if we're going to have this opportunity in a year or two. And then it was written, said Sternberg, noting if they don't win this year, they could pull back, pull back, pull back uh, for, for 2025. Pull back. And listen, I, I'm like, why does Stu Sternberg have to do this like every year? It feels yeah. like every year when he yeah. does this interview, he always has to say something about, yeah, we're really stretching it thin this year. Right. We're really stretching it when it comes to money. You're spending 90 million. You're, it's not like you're spending two hundred million on a on a ball club. It's not like you're spending three hundred million. You're spending ninety million, and you're coming on here and telling me, "Oh, we're we're going to have real losses this year, but it's going to be worth it because we feel like we have a team." It, it's a bu that's a bunch of BS. And I'm looking at like this ninety million dollar payroll. Who have the Rays added to the team that couldn't get it done last year to this year? What Ryan Pepio, Johnny DeLuca, Richie Palacios. Jose Caballero, 
Phil Maton. Am I missing anybody? Jake Odorizzi. <laughs> Who is adding? What substantial payroll have you added other than the fact that the players that you already had just ended Got up raises. getting more money through arbitration? Organic raises because they were so horribly underpaid. Right. Correct. Right. Like they. So what? What magical money? Did you did you magic did you spend to upgrade this roster? And I'm not saying those players, by the way, I don't like or that they work good deals. I'm just saying, like it, it, you, it, you didn't add substantial payroll and necessarily by the way, with a most obvious salary dump in Glad Glass now and Margot. Correct. It was nothing but a salary dump that didn't make your team better at all. Correct. You got two. And, and here's the thing. And here's the other that makes no sense. Prospects. And here's the thing that makes no sense too. Now. <laughs> I know the Rays yeah. think that they could compete this year, and I want them to think that, of course. But of course. if you look at it from the outside looking in, this year you have no Shane McClanahan, you have no Drew Rasmussen for a long time, <laughs> you have no Jeffrey Springs for a long time. Oh, and by the way, Wander Franco's taking shirtless pictures in the Dominican <laughs> Republic right now. God knows what he's doing, so he Thank ain't there. You. This is four Don't major... Don't about Johnny DeLuca and Josh Lowe on the... Okay, on... well, yeah. These are four major players who are going to stop you from necessarily competing for right. the World Series this year. 2025 is actually the year that looks better for you. Exactly, exactly. Not 2024. So what happens yeah. when if the Rays win 89 games, get into the wild card this year, and then lose in the first round, is Stu going to say, that's it, I'm done. Zach Eflin's contract rises to like $18 million next year? Nope, not happening. Randy Rosarena goes to $12 million next year? Nope, not happening. Yandy Diaz goes to $10 million next year? Dump nope, them all. not happening. They're all getting dumped as I welcome in three studs back to my rotation. Oh, wait, is one of them going to get the boot too? Yeah. I don't know. I hate these comments. It's like we're trying to like enjoy opening day coming in, what, seven or eight days? And, you know, and he has, to, he has to make these comments, and I just – Anyway, rant and over. We're, and we're the over. only and we're the only people that call him on it. Ninety million. Not, I'm, in the show. I'm, yeah. I'm counting my losses because I spent ninety million on a baseball team. Yeah, <laughs> it's unbelievable. But and by the way, you say this, you say this in in an atmosphere where you're going to get a two point four boon billion dollar boondoggle in public money for your raise redevelopment and stadium. In a time where the where the city is planning on you paying a hundred million dollars, one hundred fifty five million dollars, for property that's worth seven hundred million dollars, and you're immediately allowed to just sell it off, you don't have to build anything. I mean, it, it, you're you're getting such a sweetheart deal with the state. You're you're getting hundreds of millions of dollars, if not a billion dollars, poured into your own pockets, if not more, but just in this deal alone of public money. Not to mention the fact, as Tom Casper just wrote in it, your, your investment has increased from $200 million, which, by the way, wasn't what he spent on it. He spent about $50 million of his own money. And now you own the whole thing, just about of the 10% that your partners are suing you for. And it's worth over $1.78 billion with the stadium even more. And you have the nerve. You have the nerve to say you, and to lie and then lie that you're going to lose money because you're not. You're not going to lose money. You know, it, it, it's 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 so the fact that he says it is bad enough. The fact that he that this narrative has continued to go on unchallenged is just ludicrous. It's ludicrous. Um, but anyway, uh, we thought we spent a lot of time on that. Uh, all right. I want to get to a couple other things. Um, the Devin White comments. This is you, you sent them to me and I just I just love this. This is fantastic. <laughs> Um, who who put their foot in their mouth worse, Devin White or Stu Sternberg? I don't know. It's 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 always it's going to be a tough tough go. So his quote, as you sent me, parting shot at the Bucks. Uh, it's an opportunity going to Philadelphia. It's an opportunity to show why I was top five, why I helped the team win the Super Bowl. White said about signing with Philadelphia to prove I don't lack any confidence on a one year deal. Last year wasn't who you were. That's never been Devin White on tape. Now you get an opportunity on a bigger stage. It's a bigger platform here. It's a better all-around team built right here, right now to do great things. And I want to be part of that. Dude, where do I start with this absolute alphabet soup of bullshit? I mean, just awful. Uh, just awful. And and so let's start with um, uh, it was an opportunity to show why I was top five. Were you not given an opportunity in Tampa Bay? Dude. 
any other coach who wasn't acting as your father figure would have benched you two years ago. Don't tell me you didn't get an opportunity here. Don't tell me you didn't get an opportunity. You did. Um, to prove I don't lack any confidence on a one-year deal. Nobody was giving you anything else. Don't act like you chose to prove it on a one-year deal. Nobody was offering you. I'm surprised you got 7.5, to be honest. I'm shocked that Philadelphia did that. Um, last year wasn't who you were. That's never been Devin White on type tape. Nice job going third person there. Oh, yeah, it's the tape's been pretty consistent since the Super Bowl season, actually. You can't get off blocks. You're way over aggressive. You don't break down to make tackles. You over you overrun plays. You get you get used in the red zone and on key third downs because they know you're going to be over aggressive and you're targeted. You play losing football. Okay. Uh now you get an opportunity on a bigger stage. All right, I'll give you that. Philadelphia's a bigger state, bigger platform. I'll give you that one. Yeah. And a better all around team. <laughs> Did you not see the last game that Philadelphia played? It was against your Buccaneers. You might you might have missed it because you don't pay attention much when your team's playing. Uh so Philadelphia's a better all around team than the Bucs. You know, because that's not what the scoreboard said. I know. Am I wrong, Nick? That did I miss no, something no, there? No, you didn't miss anything. The two teams played, right? They did. They did. They, they, they played they on the field. Played. So, so on the field. So it was an opportunity, and you even got the play, which makes Tampa. You'll be will be better without you. So the two teams played on a field, not very recently, and one team kicked their ass, and it wasn't Philadelphia winning. So by any metric, Philadelphia is not a better football team. Case closed. I would agree. Yeah. So, what are you talking about? I'm so glad this dude is gone. It's It was way past time. I wish Jason Light would have listened to us and me at the beginning of the season and traded his ass for something. Like, I don't know, uh, a, a case of water would have been nice. To just get something for him. You could have got, actually could have got probably something fair, fairly valuable for Devin White at the beginning of this, beginning of last season. After all the stupid shenanigans he pulled in the offseason, I think he probably still had value. Fair? Third round pick? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Well, hell, I'll take a six-round pick. We, we got nothing now. Uh, I, I don't know what type of compensatory pen. I don't know how this works. I should have looked this up. Um, if he's, I think it goes by how what kind of free agent deal you sign, right? The value of the deal determines so, what the yeah. compensatory pick is. It's not where you were drafted, right? So I don't think the Bucks are going to get much compensation for him signing somewhere else. So it is what it is. Good riddance. Bye-bye. Yeah, um, uh, I would just add with Devin, like, you know, for the entire time that he was here, and it was five seasons, I believe, outside of the four-game stretch in the postseason in 2020, Devin White never played like he warranted the fifth overall pick in that draft. No, no. And, 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 but here's the thing. But that's what makes his legacy, his defining overall legacy in Tampa Bay is so complicated because when they absolutely needed him, he was awesome, Right. And we always enjoyed Devin from, you know, the, the horses and all that stuff. Fun character, all those things. Uh, but he just never lived up to that billing. And, and, and a lot of players don't. A lot of the, the linebackers that have been taken in the first round since Devin's been taken, a lot of them don't really pan out well. And they took him with the fifth overall pick. So, uh, yeah, the, the comment about, you know, Philadelphia, this is a better overall team, that was... That's interesting. And, and, you know, we talked to Sal Powell Monday, and so much of it is going to be how Vic Fangio... Uh, sort of uses him in that defense. I got news for you. Uh, Devin White's not even going to be playing next to Levante David in mm -hmm. Philadelphia. Devin mm -hmm. White, what is, is he supposed to be linebacker one, the, the, the guy in Philadelphia at the moment? Who's he, who's he playing next to? Kobe Dean? Uh, I mean, what's Devin going to be asked to do? Probably stuff that he's already shown you that he just can't do. Uh, five years in, you are who you are. So uh, that's Philly's problem. I'm sure that with their one-year deal, they feel like they can – try to get whatever out of him they can and unlock something. But, um, yeah, I don't see it. I really don't see it. Well, we've got the, uh, some great comments uh, from uh, the fans. Thank you guys so much for joining us, by the way, uh, whether it's on 102.5, the strike on that great HD signal there, or uh, on Facebook or on Twitter or on YouTube, you know, where you can comment. We really appreciate it. Um, as far as Devin White goes, I'm going to pump some of these up. Da, da, da. Nathan Elliott says, Devin White is Gerald McCoy 2.0. People forget the comments and videos that McCoy made when he signed with Carolina. 
Man, I don't, don't want to put them in the same group. No, I, no way. No way. I think way. Gerald gets way too much hate from. from I, I agree. Base. I totally agree. I, I don't know what that. I don't even remember. I think he did take a couple of shots, but you know, I, I say this about Gerald all the time. But Gerald's made up with the with the team by this yeah. point. I think it's all just. Yeah. yeah. He his his his. I say this a lot. Gerald McCoy wasn't the problem on those teams. No, he was he was the best player on those teams. So why is it his fault? that the team sucked, you know, it's the organization's fault. They put nothing around him, nothing. Correct. And, and he had, and, and he, he had to face the music for yeah. every embarrassing loss that they exactly. went. Exactly. And he always did it from what I remember. Did. And he always did. He always did. And he was the highest paid player. Why isn't he this, that, and the other? Cause there's nothing around him. He's getting double and triple teamed. He did what he could. Was he better than in Dominican Sue? No, he wasn't. Not for he what wasn't. that team needed. No. But Indomitian Sue had a lot more help uh, throughout his career, especially look what Indomitian Sue did when he came here, won a Super Bowl. Right. You think Gerald McCoy would have won a Super Bowl with that team? Yes. Yes, he would have. So stop with that. And so not even close. Devin White had, in my mind, one good year, two good years. That's it. Everything else was trash. Trash. And and the, and the Bucks have been covering for him ever since. Uh, Thomas Casper says Devin should go ride his horse down uh, Meth Head South Kensington and post a few IGs. <laughs> he might get shot. <laughs> he might get shot. Uh, Devin White will need therapy when Eagle fans and media rip him apart. I, you know, um, yeah, he will because that media don't play. I mean, he you can you can hide him here in Tampa Bay. You know, you'll still have media and people saying he's the greatest linebacker. Of course, we weren't buying into that, but he was treated. Even 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 last year, there were people in the media saying this guy's, you know, uh, we got to re-sign him. Or I, is he JP, coming I back? Was seeing, I was seeing people comment on on like Instagram posts and Twitter, and these were mostly fans that were, like when Devin White got signed and it was announced on like the NFL socials, people were commenting like, "Oh, Jason Kelsey has to come back now. Look at the team the Eagles are building." And I'm like, "What? what? You're gonna? I mean, okay." Saquon Barkley signs, Bryce Huff signs, okay. Devin White signs, and all of a sudden it's like, Jason Kelsey has got to get back in this team, man. Look at what they're building. Because Devin White signed? I, I, I Listen, I could argue that Saquon Barkley is not a great um, upgrade on DeAndre Swift, who had a great season. And you paid and you paid out the butt for, for, uh, for Saquon Barkley. You totally overpaid well, it. Well, Saquon's totally going to get a lot better. Devin White. Uh, Saquon's going to get a lot better help from the guys in front of him. No, no question, no question. But, but I'm just saying, is he that much better than DeAndre Swift? That much more money? No, no. I don't know. All these running backs got elsewhere. paid. I don't like any of the running back contracts. If I'm right. being honest with you, right? Uh, that Nathan says Devin White has a great public relations specialist who's able to type up and release nice messages to cover up Devin White's actual Instagram and Twitter comments. Amen to that. Um, interesting thing here. Most LSU players start off like gasoline blazing hot and burn out fast. Trying to that think just about our LSU players because yeah, Quan was kind of the same about? way. Yeah, Quan was a little bit. Quan's still in the league though. He's still playing. Yeah. Um, Kendall Beckwith was unfortunate. What happened to him? To Marcus Russell. Yikes. Uh, did you forget the golf cart rides with Cam Newton? Do you forget how bitter he was when Bucks gave Sue number? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I just I still can't compare him and Devin White. I, I just can't. Daryl Daryl, why did we go to seven Pro Bowls? Seven eight Pro Bowls? Well, yeah, around there, I think he had an All Pro in there or something like that. Yeah, I mean, nearly did. sixty sacks as a buck playing defensive tackle. I mm -hmm. mean, he was just always compared to Warren. I think that's all it comes down to. He was always yeah. try. Everybody was trying to like put him in a box like he was Warren, and he just wasn't that. Who played with a lot better players too, by the way. Played with a lot right better players. Got to get this thing off my these lanyards. The synthetic lanyards on my my uh, wonderful olive Italian skin. This doesn't olive work. Italian wonderful <laughs> olive Italian skin. What in the world? <laughs> it's a very sensitive, very sensitive part. Um, gonna, right. By the way, are you going to make a, a trip? Because I don't know. I don't know where this place is. But did you see the Portnoy review of Nona Slice House? I did. In fact, that, I re, I retweeted or re uh, that over it on in, my Instagram. Is that Safety close Harbor. to the Vows Bar? Yeah. Probably not. Well, no, it's more close to safety. Heart. I mean, relatively speaking, yeah. That pizza looked fantastic. 
the second I, pizza, the the what was it? The one that he called the margarita, margarita. or whatever. Yeah, the first one looked good too. That was a good basic cheese. Yeah, standard you know? basic cheese. I like never heard of Nona. Nice undercarriage. Nice yeah. undercarriage. Yeah. <laughs> I never heard of Nona Slice House before. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. But that place was popping. Over there. Yeah, it was popping. It's beautiful, like a little outdoor area there. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see him trash the addition? Oh, I, I did. Have to yeah. Bring Ashley in for this. She saw I, the I whole did. Thing. That, and, and Casey does weddings Ashley. at the addition all the time. So she was like, "Yeah, I, I could understand." What? I'm like ten thousand oh dollars for my a God, suite. She's not, she says she's not ready. Come on over here. We're, we're on the we're on the David Dave Portnoy, which you watched. Yes. Yeah. So you watched there. Get in here. We can't see. You. Slide on over. There we go. Okay. We need a bigger bear. Ashley's here with her uh, uh, David Portnoy uh, edition report. So I did not see this. Um, you saw this. So. That was my choice of your own. I sent it yeah, to you on I know. Instagram. He I know, but I didn't it. see the video. I didn't watch the whole video. What did he say about the edition? He said it should be ranked as the worst hotel in the United States of America for its price. That it's literally like the worst place he's ever stayed. He said, I can't imagine why the F in Tampa anyone would pay for a hotel like this. Oh, <laughs> I could stay at the Four Seasons in Manhattan for half the price of this room. It is at best average. And they should shut it down and start from scratch. How many videos did he do? Because he did the video Four. of the whole suite, right? Yeah. How much was that suite? The suites ranged when he stayed there, I believe, last week. $2,000 to $10,000. He had his assistant book him a middle-of-the-line $5,000 night suite. And, and you, you saw it. I like did he, see it. he did the tour. And but... I've stayed in much nicer suites <laughs> yeah. for much lesser prices in much nicer areas. Yeah, I've, I've it you was know, crazy. I don't want to, you know, we don't want to trash the edition, but Portnoy did. But I went there for dinner one time, uh, dinner, appetizer, whatever it was. I wasn't there. Have a couple drinks. Must have been somebody um, else. <laughs> couple, I think we, uh, no, the great John Acosta from Sonova's Bank. We went and had a couple drinks at <laughs> oh, the bar yeah. there. The bar's nice, looks really, really nice, but it's not like a huge, spectacular, you know, thing that you would expect to see in a, in a five star hotel. Did, the um, you know, the pool area is kind of cool, but not it's nothing Vegas esque. It just like right. when I went through the hotel, I was like really, really underwhelmed, like really under like it was supposed to be this huge, incredible five star thing. And I was like, you know, it's nice, it's really, really nice, but it's not five star right. crazy nice. I said, I think when our bed is made up with its pillows and everything, it looks nicer oh, in yeah. my bedroom no at question. home than it does no in that room that he was no staying question. in. You do a great job, and that. he said basically. It is a consumer advisory video because he does like bougie things. But if you give that hotel any of your money, it's on you to get taken advantage. No, of I heard the regular point. rooms are like eight hundred dollars. Yeah, for a regular room, like five to eight. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you for the update. That You're was welcome. awesome. Go book your room at the Edition. Use the <laughs> David Portnoy discount. They may have to start offering that. Good. I mean, so, Casey, I, I, so Casey does weddings there? She's done weddings there before. She says it's more the amenities that make it what it is. She says the rooms are just kind of like, you know, eh. eh. But it's the it's the uh it's the ambiance. You know how it is, the location, all the that. The staircase? Kind of stuff. Huh? The I staircase, mean, sure. The staircase? I don't know. These aren't hotels nice. I stay in, JP. I'm a I'm a Hilton Garden Inn guy. Okay. I, <laughs> I'm not staying in anything called the addition. Yeah. Well you look you overlook Amelie Arena. It's not it's but his, his room for a $5,000 suite, he opened up the window, and all he was looking at was, like, the side of Amelie Arena. Oh. Like, he didn't have water or anything. He was just looking at the side of Amelie. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, but he has, I think, in his in his stays here, he's, he's complimented Tampa Bay very much. Doesn't well, he, he can't figure out what Tampa Bay is. Right. He's, like, in Safety Harbor, and he's like, am I in Tampa Florida. Bay? Yes. No? Yes. <laughs> and the people were saying no. I'm like, no, yes, you are. I don't you know. are in Tampa Bay. He hasn't made it over to the Tampa places yet in the reviews. It's all been over on in the Pinellas side. So well, I wonder. I wonder. If, well, the, the addition obviously is downtown Tampa. Well, he was staying in that. Oh, one. For, that was a for live pizza, video. you mean? For, for pizza. pizza, yeah, he hasn't made it to over to the uh, on the Tampa. What, any side other of great reviews. pizza reviews? There was like this one called the Violet Stone that he had that looked really good, and he had. To, I haven't they, heard of they, that either. They burned the pizza the first time. They overburned it, and so he gave them a second <laughs> shot because he loved the story. They were like locally from Philly. Um. Yeah, the pizza got like a seven nine because of the because he had to get a second shot, or it would have been an eight one. But he, they also have this Philly cheesesteak, and he said it literally compared to anything you could get in Philly. He gave it like a nine two the cheesesteak. Really? Yeah, the Violet Stone. It's on like Ninth Street or something like that in St. Pete downtown. 
So I haven't heard of one. it. There, what's that pizza place downtown? It's right. Um, it's right across from Janice Landing. They they have great pizza. Is that Oak and Stone? No, not Oak and Stone. Oak and Stone's good though. I've, I've had their pizza. No, it's a mom and pop. It's like they only take cash. Um, you That's guys know it's right across the corner. It's I right. It's right across from Janice Landing. It's not on Central. It's like in between. Um, what is the name of that? Oh, uh, it's really really good pie. Um, God, I wish I could remember the name of that. And you know, it's, and it's not you know the crazy you know thirty five dollars for a pie type deal. You right. know, for a cheese pie. What none of that stuff. Um, all right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back on the other side. I want to get into this FSU thing with Clemson joining the suit. The ACC uh, filed a countersuit against Clemson, which is interesting. Um, and th the fact that Clemson joined is a huge, huge factor for a big reason. And uh, I'll explain it to you next. We're brought to you by the Jeeves Law Group, J-E-E-V-E-S Law Group .com. Uh, We're hanging out here at Valspar. And if you need anything for in the legal realm whatsoever, Scott, by the way, is a great class action attorney he is this is something that he's done uh for many many years and had great great success he's one of the best class action lawsuit people in the world uh dream finders homes i might find that out in a very uh quick way uh because there's a lot of people that hate dream finders homes and because for for a great reason by the way and i would be one i would be on that list so he may be filing a class action lawsuit against dream finders homes very soon um and he don't they don't want to see him coming they do not want to see him come. So Scott Jeeves will get results, and I hope he does, uh, for us and, and the thousands of people that have complained about uh, DreamFinders Homes. So if you're thinking about buying a DreamFinders Home, I would definitely check out all the Google re reviews and the Facebook reviews. Stay away. Stay away. Uh, the Jeeves Law Group, will. Uh, that's why we have them. That's why we they, – to get justice, and that's what they do. So go to JeevesLawGroup.com. And uh, check them out. All right, quick break here from the Vals Bar. We're hoping Rondé Barber will have time to stop by and join us. Uh, Tracy West, hopefully, will be able to stop by, tournament director. And we may have some other surprises for you as well. Three minute break. Stay with us. JP here for my friends at your local Synovus Bank. And I do mean friends, and I do mean local. One of the local managers in Tampa is John Acosta, big fan of the show, and I've known him for over 40 years. He's been in local banking since 1983. You talk about developing relationships. You don't stick around for that long unless you're doing things the right way and have a great reputation. And that's the focus company-wide at Synovus. Big enough to handle any complex international transaction, but small enough to answer the phone when you have an urgent question about your business or personal account. And for personal accounts, they have a very easy app that works great. You can do everything online. And for large or small businesses, you will get that personal touch and services to help build your business, taking your dreams and aspirations from the whiteboard to reality. We can make that happen. Let us show you how. For a get acquainted meeting to open a business or personal account, just call John or go to synovus.com to find out where your local branch is. Everyone knows Italiano Insurance is your go-to for home insurance, but they also have an amazing team that focuses on business insurance. Yes, your business is most likely your biggest asset, so make sure you have the right coverage at the most competitive price. And if you started a side hustle recently, don't forget you need business insurance because if you get sued in this over-litigious society we live in, you could lose all your personal wealth. So get that business insurance. And for the best customer service, always choose Italiano. My representative, Charity, is amazing. I called her late on a Friday because my insurance was going to lapse. She stayed late until the job was done. You just don't find that anymore. Give them a call, 813-877-7799. That's 813-877-7799. Italiano Insurance. JP here for the Geddes Gordon Real Estate Group and our good friend Jane Geddes. Folks, simply put, there is nobody like Jane. Jane is a former LPGA two-time major championship winner. She was also vice president of talent relations at WWE. She also has a law degree from Stetson. So if Jane can drain a 10-footer to win the U.S. Open and stare down Hulk Hogan in the boardroom. You want Jane on your real estate team to not only negotiate the best deal, but find you the perfect home or investment property. And when you work with the Geddes Gordon Group, you become part of the real estate family and get concierge services that include expertly staging, marketing, and preparing your home for sale. Advice on golf properties. Hey, you might even get some golf tips. 
Many of their clients become friends long after the sale or purchase is completed. It's all part of the deal. So if you're looking for that perfect home or investment property or try to get top dollar for your home, go with Jane Geddes and the Geddes Gordon Group because there's nobody like Jane. Call 813-485-6808 or go to geddesgordon.kw.com. That's G-E-D-D-E-S gordon.kw.com or call 813-485-6808. Let's go. Right now. Back to the show on Fan Stream Sports. Probably not. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the J.P. Peterson Show. Uh, we're coming to you live from the Valspar Championship here. The first round is underway. i got to catch me up on a leaderboard there. The, some of the big names going off uh, later this afternoon. We'll give you some of the, uh, yeah. the tea times. we got a two-man tie at the top right now. Keith Mitchell is 400 through six. Oh, Cashmere uh, Keith. Yeah, Probably wearing a Cashmere sweater out here this morning. Aaron uh, Battle, I want to, if Aaron I got Battley, that correct. Yeah. He is yeah. 400 through five, nice. followed by Davis Riley, who had a really good showing here, what was it, two years ago? Yes. Uh, yeah. Cam Young and Brendan Todd are also What's tied. Cam Young at? Cam Young is tied for third with a three under with Davis Riley and Brendan Todd. So that's nice. your leaderboard right now. Nice, very nice. What a beautiful uh, scoring conditions today. Wind is not existing. Couldn't ask for a better, a better day, right? Oh, like, where did this little like cool front come from? I thought we were done with this, but oh. it's beautiful. No, oh, it's been. I, I, I played golf yesterday. I played tennis with Sal Pal yesterday morning. Yeah. Oh, he, did you got to tell us what happened there? Something tells me it didn't go well. If you didn't, if you didn't lead with it, actually, uh, <laughs> never goes well. Well, I didn't have a D one college player on my doubles team to bail me out this time, so of course I lost. <laughs> Six one, six two, and then we played like a mini oh, three three game third. Set. Yeah, I did. Um, I but actually was playing competitively. I just can't finish points. Like he's he's a killer. Like he just I I I, I can't finish points. I, like I'll have a a sitter at the net, and I'll just choke it. I'll choke it. Like I'll play the point well, and then I'll choke it. Or he'll hit like some amazing forehand down the line. He just he just the dude yeah, is just you know it's the crazy. Sabar. I know I don't want to tell Sal Pal this, but. It's crazy. All these years I've watched him on TV. I never took him for much of the uh, the athlete type, but here he is kicking he's your butt. He's kicking your butt in tennis. 68. He's kicking my ass. I mean, I'm right. not 48, but you know, he's still he's 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 the best man. We had we had just and then we had a beautiful lunch on the Palmasia patio overlooking the golf course on a, you know, 72 degrees and sunny. Then I got to tee it up with my boys in the afternoon there. Had a putt on 18 for birdie. Lip out. All right, would have won the money. Wyndham Clark style? I totally Wyndham Clark did, man. Had about a 25-footer 20, up the hill. Was in all the way. Was in all the way. And then right at the end. Oh, oh, oh. No. So I didn't lose $4.5 million like he lost, but you know, I lost a little quiche. But that's all right. Beautiful. I mean, and then I went to the uh, the baseball bourbon and cigars thing. Florida Sports Hall of Fame had on last night Wade Boggs, uh, Clint Hurdle. Um, they, they had a, and Dwayne Stats was doing the uh, doing the moderating on the discussion. There's, you know, just great baseball stories. A lot of a lot of great guys. Place was packed at the uh, Newman Cigar Factory outdoor area. So like you know, gorgeous night. Uh, lots of great folks were there, and it was just really that's a day. I'm not bragging. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I, that's how blessed, that's that's how blessed I am. I'm a very lucky very blessed man and then i get to come home to the lovely ashley so i mean had to throw that in when he, she's sitting right here yeah i mean yeah i'm i'm a i'm an extremely blessed man and i i have incredible gratitude but um yeah it's a fun day so and, and sal and i are going back and forth about Devin. you know he he's he's like we'll see we'll see big fan geo will find a way to get something out of my like uh if ty bowles couldn't do it i don't know good luck good luck with it good luck with it uh, by the way, somebody um, who was it? Uh, Bob, let's put in here. Uh, Bucks Rays Bolt said that Shaq fired back on the Bucks. Like, so did he? Was he supporting Devin White or was he? No, no. He no. he had some like kind of comment about. Um, I want to get it right. I'm going to bring it up real quick. But he said he aims to make them. Uh, he said I still got a lot to prove. Um. Tampa is going to be mad they let me go because this year I'm planning on having and the success that we're about to have as a team is going to be amazing. So Ooh, Shaq Barrett? Yeah, that's that's really all he said. He just said he's going to try to make Tampa mad that they let him go. Really? I'm yeah. surprised at that. Yeah. 
I mean, what are they supposed to do? I mean, it's just. And they weren't giving him, you know, like I said, like I would have taken Shaq back probably half of what the, the Dolphins gave him. The Bucks were never giving him that contract. Yeah. And that, I think they had to release him because of, or, or they wouldn't have been able to get the cap savings. Right. I, I guess sometimes you can come back and re-sign, but I, I, I mean, to, 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 to just kind of say that the Bucks didn't want him, I think is a little. And Jason, you know, it was probably, Jason said it was basically like the hardest thing he's ever had to do as right. a GM was make right. that call to Shaq. Yeah. So I don't know, but it, this, you know, these are things that happen in that, as we say in this business, it rarely ends well. It right. rarely ends well with it, you know. Even your right. favorite players, you Listen, know, that have had a love affair with the team. Go, go watch the. Uh, I don't know if you've watched it on Apple TV, the the Patriots Dynasty, the ten part series. No, I have not. I, I, I just finished thing. it, and when you get to like the last three episodes, I mean, again, you like you just said, it never ends well. It no. never ends well, even at that level. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it's because crazy. It's a business, and that's when right. it really becomes a business, right? You know? Um. Nathan Elliott says Shaq's comments not so much a fireback. That was just the Bucks were gonna regret letting him go. That's fine. That's, yeah, that's fine. Just what Devin White stuff. said was stupid and ignorant, <laughs> and the, but typical Devin White. What Shaq said is what you say when you go to a new team and you want to say some things about your new team. That and that's and that's fine. I, I have no problem with that at all, whatsoever. Um, and he also, by the way, he also had all of his, you know, how much he thanks the organization and everything else. So that counts too. That counts too. By the way, just to wrap up the pizza talk, uh, Rick says uh, an Italian place that only takes cash. Are you sure, JP? It's a mom and pop pizza place. <laughs> there might be something going on in the back. I don't know. I didn't go back to the poker room. I mean, I don't. I don't know what's going on there. Um, K Dub Four says you got to try Pajanos in North Reddington Beach. Pajanos. They also have one in Indian Rocks. I think I've been to what Pajanos. It's right there on like uh, the Gulf Boulevard, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Been in business over 35 years. Pizza's fantastic, but Italian sub only on Friday and Saturday only is off the chart. When you like do a thing like an Italian sub only on Friday and Saturday, like you only do it two days, it's got to be good. Just by yeah. definition, it's got to be like off the charts good. All right, I got to try. I'm a I'm a big Italian sub guy. Y'all are gonna make me go. Y'all are we? I'm gonna spend money now today. I'm done. I'm dying. I'm gonna have to go spend for money Jersey today. Mike's. I have to get a pizza now. I have to get a pizza now. We've talked Who's, too much about pizza. Yeah, I got to get a pizza, and you know what? As a fact, on the way home, we might stop at Nona Slice. Yeah, we, yeah, because it's gonna be on the way home on Safety Harbor. Get that margarita pizza. That's what I'm talking about. I'll get. Well, I'll get it. I'll post it tonight. We'll post. We'll we'll do our own. Maybe we'll do a little. Uh, Portnoy pizza thing. Yeah, we'll do a knockoff. We'll do a knockoff. How's that sound? All right. Done. Done. Be looking for that on tonight's uh, Instagram. Uh, da, 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 da. When in Bradenton, try the pizza at the Loaded Barrel. They only do pizza by the slice or the pizza. Oh, there you go. There you go. Um, yeah. Pajano's has tap beers. Yeah. Yes. I've been there. Fantastic pizza. I agree. 100%. Me and my daughter went there. It was really, really good. Really, really good. All right. Getting to the FSU thing. So, Clemson joins the lawsuit, right? And it very, it, it echoes a lot of what Florida State's at, uh, lawsuit was. You know, there was no vote of the entire conference, which they had to do in order to sue another party of the conference. Uh, there was no vote, conference-wide vote, to accept the original media rights deal. So there's so many violations of the contract and the ACC bylaws that FSU has cited. So they already have a good case. But here's the thing, and this is um, – I would give great credit to uh, my, our good friends at the Jeff Cameron Show. Great podcast, by the way. If you have and into FSU sports, got to listen. And and they said something I thought was really crucial because remember the op. There's an opt in for ESPN in 2025. Okay, there's an opt in for um, for this new media rights deal that carries through 2036. Right, so. And it's even though, even though it's 50% and it's going to be a great deal, it's only a great deal if FSU and Clemson are in the conference because that total deal is worth crap if FSU and Clemson aren't in the conference. See what I'm saying? So they they even though it's $30 million less and it's probably 50% of the market, you ain't making any money showing Duke football games. Sorry. Nobody's interested in Wake Forest football. Nobody. NC State, maybe, but no. So if FSU and Clemson, and this is all about media rights, right? 
Correct. If FSU Clemson leave the conference and Miami and North Carolina join this suit as well, there's no way ESPN can pick up that option. And when they don't pick up the option, the, the ACC media rights are open for renegotiation. So now that Clemson has joined the suit, the 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 media rights deal is really, and this is why that I'm sure they had an opt-in in it because they were afraid of realignment. It's it's pointless. So right. FSU really really holds the hammer now, and Clemson, and I would ex- I would expect North Carolina, Miami, at some point to join this lawsuit to make it even stronger because there's they, definitely they no absolutely way. will. Yeah, there's they definitely no will. way North Carolina it, they 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 opt in to a media agreement in an ACC that doesn't have Clemson, FSU, North Carolina, and Miami. It's right. worthless. It's yeah. absolutely worthless. And and and, by, and yeah, the way this is going to get done, I, I I would have to think it's going to get settled in some way. Um, I don't think either school is going to have to pay this five hundred and seventy-two million dollar uh, buyout. But no, no, are they? But <laughs> somewhere in between, uh, somewhere starting maybe with a hundred million or a hundred and change, whatever that number is, uh, to get out. I think that would be, end up being more feasible. Well, at this um, point, but Nick, at this point, FSU depends, has all the leverage. It, yeah, it's going to depend on how much leverage FSU and Clemson have in this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but you know, we knew this was going to happen. FSU got in front of this. They took the, the brunt of everything that happened. I'm sure what happened in uh, December with the whole committee uh, expedited this. Yes. And as I've been saying, any school that's in the ACC that's serious about being competitive in college football going forward was going to join Florida State in this fight. And it's it's simple economics. Um the AC, a, ACC schools right now are only making about 24 million tops annually. And if you look at the new Big Ten deal, we're talking 70 to 100 million a year <laughs> for every institution. And then pay attention to what just happened with the college football playoff, which is expanded. Exactly. If it wasn't clear already, the SEC and the Big Ten run this thing. They're, getting, they're getting an annual payout of roughly 21 million from this new deal. A- A- ACC schools, 13. you're around $13 million, yeah. okay? You're a second-rate citizen. You think Florida State, you think Clemson wants to be a, a second-rate citizen in the modern day of college football? Yeah. Hell no. And neither and does remember, Miami, neither yeah. does North Carolina, neither does NC State, or whatever schools want to compete in football in this conference. It's no surprise that the Dukes of the world, the Wake Forest of the world, the Pitts of the world are the ones who are saying, no, 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 we don't want this. We of don't course. want this. Because these schools are making their are making their money for them. Yeah, they've been they've been coattailing on the big schools for years. Correct. Everybody in the ACC has been go. That whole ESPN media deal was done because of FSU and Clemson and Miami and North Carolina, mostly FSU, because they are they bring the eyeballs. They're in the top ten in terms of um, the eyeballs that they bring in their college football games. Even when they suck, they remain in the top ten, and that's where the money is. That's where the money is, folks. And so. I, Florida State really has the ACC by the cajones now. They really do, and they're and this is why they did this, and this is why they took all the heat, and this is why they got screwed out of the uh, of the college football playoff. A lot of you people said I was I was nuts for talking about this political conspiracy. It's all here for you, folks. This is this is why ESPN hates Florida State. This is why why uh, um, Kirk Herbstreet and Paul Feinbaum both said it publicly. Nobody likes FSU within college football, and he doesn't mean the Big Ten. Now, the SEC doesn't like FSU because of what they did because they are upset in the apple cart. They wanted to keep FSU and Clemson down and keep them at a disadvantage, right? Well, And, and personally, I mean, that's what you do. When you're in competition with other people, you do whatever you can to keep your competition down. That's just part of business, so I get it. But when you do dirty business, dirty business, which is what ESPN and the SEC did, FSU, which other teams got in? Oh, two SEC teams. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shocking development. When you do dirty business, when you change all the rules at the last minute, that's not cool. And that's what happened to Florida State. And this is all, you know, as we told you, then this is all going to be the fallout from it. And this is why FSU has to get out of this this conference. And they will. And I believe they're going to land in the Big Ten by 2025. So, but this media rights deal now, there's no way ESPN is going to pay that much money and opt in for an 11 year agreement. Uh, to televise ACC games without Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, and Miami. Just FSU and Clemson alone, it's not worth it. 
Yeah, and, and, and the ACC already showed you how inferior they think they are as a conference. And this is why, you know, I've, I've criticized the leadership of Jim Phillips a lot uh, in this conference in general. Just the mere fact that when this whole deal just got ratified earlier this week or whatever it was with the new playoff and the revenue distribution, the fact that the ACC would even agree to just get walked over by the other two conferences and say, yeah, you know what? They, yeah. You're right. They're the better conference. Just pay them $10 million more. We're inferior. It doesn't matter. Like, it, it's just there's, there's a lack of, like, foresight going on from those in charge of the ACC. And they're going to do everything they can to try to survive, but they don't realize it. You are dead already. You well, are DOA, and you don't even know it. As, as I've been told by many people at Florida State over the years, um, the ACC and the biggest problem, Florida, Florida State's had problems with the ACC for a long time. And the biggest reason is they were pissed that these other schools don't take football seriously. They just never took football seriously. They didn't fund it. They didn't Correct. care because they were basketball schools. North Carolina, Duke, NC State, it's a basketball conference. That's its heritage. It, it's not even good at basketball anymore. I know. It's not even good at basketball anymore because the, the playing field has been leveled in that sport. Uh, whereas, you know, North Carolina and Duke and all these other teams used to have great advantages in recruiting. They don't a, as much anymore, the Blue Bloods. So, yeah, and, and that's why Florida State, Florida State was always pissed about it. And that's why F, F, uh, ACC is in the debacle that they are in because they never took meet, they never took football seriously. And and now and here's the thing: people might be saying, "Well, I mean, why did these colleges need thirty million more?" I mean, it's not like so. What does that buy you in terms of competition? Well, now it buys you players in the NIL world. It buys you players. Well, JP, you can't use that money for players. Yes, you can. You you can move the money around any way you're going to move it. Um, but the media rights deal, or, or that's what drives most of the money. And that's where most of the money comes from. And you can't, so you, basically, as I've been telling you, you'd be at a, a 40, $50 million deficit in terms of salary cap. While these other teams in the SEC and Big Ten are paying their players in, in form of NIL money, you, you won't have the same war chest. And you can't compete. Simple as that. And in where USF comes into this, and everybody is like excited about USF going to the ACC, and they should, but the ACC they're going to be joining is not going to be it, one of the top tier conferences and there's going to be a, a huge demarcation between the p2 and everybody else um right that, I, I mean believe, listen, listen the days the, yeah and unfortunately the days of the the, the mid majors i guess you call them that in basketball mostly right. not in football but the, let's the group of five the days of those schools you know getting their justice not that they really ever did to be honest with you but that's 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 over okay it, 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 this is this is going straight away to a, a three conference setting um, maybe even two, like I'm still holding hope to the big 12, uh, to see what happens there. But, um, the big 12 is obviously still third in line. It's basically the two that are going to run it. We know that. And you're going to have all these other conferences. It depends. It depends what happens when Florida, if Florida state Clemson, Miami, and these schools leave the ACC, are they getting stripped of their automatic qualifier when it comes to the college football playoff? That's going to be the big question of what's going to make it worth it or not. Because I would have to think once this happens, if it happens, they're going to take in the USFs of the world. They're going to take in the other schools that are remaining. But are they going to deem them still worthy enough? I have to put it that way because I right. feel like this is how they're thinking. Yeah. Are they going to deem that conference worthy enough to get an automatic qualifier? Or are they going to reduce the automatic qualifiers to the other three conferences and then everything else is going to be the next ranked teams and then you'll have the one... Yep. Group of five, which is now going to be all these other conferences, which would include the ACC in this scenario, you'll get one at large bid. Is that what it's going to look like? Yeah, I think so. Because uh, this new uh, agreement with ESPN and these two conferences, and I, I'm shocked that Fox did not get a piece of this deal. I don't know how that went down. Uh, I got to, I, I haven't, I got to find out why that didn't happen. I, I'm sure Fox threw money at it, or maybe they were just kept out of the negotiations with ESPN. And the co college football playoff. It's weird because the college football playoff is run essentially by ESPN because they pay for it. I'm trying to put it together, but it's it's you know publicly a group of presidents and athletic directors. I'm, I I think so. I, I, I it's got to be a huge political thing, but I'm shocked that Fox didn't get a piece of it. Yeah, and the Big Ten. That's weird to me um, because why would they why would they come together to do this deal? The, the Big Ten and the SEC, 
and then Fox get excluded for those games. It's weird. I don't know. I, there's something to that. I got to figure it out, and we'll, we'll we'll tell you when we when we do. There's I need to talk, need to talk to some people in those in those places because that just seems a little bizarre. Um, I, I want to get into uh, the Shohei Hotani thing. Um, oh my goodness! <laughs> what wow, what a story, huh? What a story. If you haven't heard this one, his interpreter basically was stealing his money and gambling. Well, that's what we've been told. Or maybe he was laying bets for Shohei Otani. Maybe Shohei Otani was laying bets and <laughs> his interpreter is a, a hell of a good friend. Yeah, was interpreting for him at the at the uh at the betting window. Um maybe alleged I don't know. Who knows? We'll get into the details of that. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, Rondé Barman looking over my shoulder to see if Rondé's running up. So we'll we'll hopefully chat with him today. Tracy West, the Valspar director, hopefully stopping by as well. Um, we'll get into that, a little bit of the lightning as well, as they uh, take on San Jose tonight. It's got to be a dub. Got to be a dub tonight. Keep this thing rolling. Uh, and we'll get into some rays as well. I don't know. I want to talk about some rays on the field. I, I don't know what you think about this pitching staff, Nick, but I don't think much of it at this point, but Oof. we know Kyle Snyder can certainly pull a rabbit out of a hat. We're coming to you live from the Valspar championship here in beautiful Palm Harbor, Florida. Uh, great event out here. The weather's going to be great today. Not so good tomorrow, but the weekend looks great with Cole Swindell on Saturday. Still a chance to get your tickets. Come on out here. It's a beautiful setting. We're brought to you by the Bay Area Modern Medical Center, BAMMC.com. Back at three. Stay with us. JP here for the Jeeves Law Group and my man, Scott Jeeves, who lives right here and has long been a highly respected member of our community. He's a proud sponsor of the Tampa Riverwalk. Jeeves Law Group is also a proud sponsor of our Grand Central District in St. Pete and has neighborhood events throughout the year. He has an office on Central Avenue in St. Pete and one on South Howard in Tampa. You can't get more local than that. So when you need an attorney, are you going to hire some huge firm that advertises all over the state or the one that supports your favorite sports show? It's the Jeeves Law Group. We're local, we're trusted, and we get results. For personal injury and personal attention, call us for a free case evaluation. That's 888-9-JEEVES. That's 888-9-J-E-E-V-E-S. All right, this is for all you guys who don't want to go to the gym and do 5,000 crunches. At Bay Area Modern Medical Center, you can get on the new True Body Machine where you can reduce fat and tone up your muscle. It's like doing 54,000 crunches in just 15 minutes. Define your body as you see fit. True Body offers personalized muscle stimulation that delivers the equivalent of those 54,000 crunches in just 15 minutes. Just get in touch with them at Bay Area Modern Medical Center, BAMMC.com. Chris Lugo and the team over there will set you up on True Body and get amazing results. Non invasive with comfortable and little to no pain and zero downtime. You can isolate and target those areas that you want to improve and treat multiple areas simultaneously. It's an amazing machine, so check it out at Bay Area Modern Medical Center, B-A-M-M-C dot com. Did you know Steve Weintraub founded the Gold to Diamond Source over 40 years ago by selling gold-plated sand dollars? And to celebrate, the Gold to Diamond Source is selling gold sand dollar jewelry with the proceeds supporting Julie and Steve Weintraub's foundation, Hands Across the Bay. Yes, in 1984, Steve opened their first location, expanded to nine stores as far as Atlanta, but now they've consolidated all that inventory under one roof, becoming one of the largest family-owned fine jewelry stores in the country. Julie, of course, joined forces with her husband 20 years ago, and they're going to celebrate by offering up the 40% off select jewelry items. Plus, with gold prices near all-time highs, it's the perfect time to trade in your broken or unworn pieces for something new and stunning. Unlock the value in your jewelry box today at the Golden Diamond Source. It's always one place, and it's always a great place. The Golden Diamond Source celebrating their 40th anniversary, 3800 Olmerton Road, always online at thegoldendiamondsource.com. Let's go. Right now. Back to the show on Fan Stream Sports. This is The Strike. 1025 WHPT, HD2 Sarasota, Tampa, St. Pete. All right, welcome back to the J.P. Peterson Show on this uh, – it feels like Friday. It feels like Friday. I don't know why, but it, it feels like Friday. But it's a Thursday. It's Thursday, first round here of the uh, Valspar Championship. 
Um, Nick Gaddis will give us a leaderboard update here in a second as we're going to get to the Shohei Otani story as well. Um, I didn't see how did how did Glass Snell pitch yesterday? I know the Dodgers were down five nothing this morning when I turned on the TV. They kind of yeah. came back though. As I as I pull up Glasnow's final numbers, yeah, today they the the game today was wild. I think it finished um, a fifteen to eleven. Padres won today. Oh, wild game! Yamamoto, the three hundred million dollar man. Yeah, uh, he pitched an inning and gave up four hits, five runs, and a walk. Wow. 43 Whoops. pitches and then was pulled. Whoops. So uh, not great for the $300 million man, uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Yesterday was 5-2 Dodgers, as we saw. Glasnow, uh, his final line, five innings, two hits, two runs, four walks, three strikeouts. So 77 not, pitches. Not great, but pretty good. Yeah, Still could okay. use him in our rotation, I would think. Yeah. I would think, yeah. Um, all right, uh you got a leaderboard for us as well? Yeah, Mitchell Keith Mitchell now has the singular lead. He's rolling five under through seven. Wow. So far. So he uh no everybody else is in the same. Sam Ryder has now moved up to three under as well. He's joined that group that's tied for third. But uh Keith Mitchell at the moment is the star of the field. Five under through seven. Did he start five on the front? Seven. Um or did he start on the front or the back? Isn't he? he started on the back. He's on seventeen right now. Oh, so he's heading to the snake pit. Yeah. Now. 17, the long par three, he, and then he the birdied, uh, the Yeah, he birdied 16. So so we'll see him walking through. The, the, the player walkthrough is right in front of me. You can't see it, but it's right in front of me. We get a little glimpse of them as they as they walk through, so he should be coming through here in a minute. Uh, what if he will grab him between nines? <laughs> no, probably won't happen. Um, hey, hell of a way to go. I'm, I wonder if he's wearing his cashmere sweater. I bet he is. It's a little chilly out here, especially in the uh, in the in the shade. All right, so here's the deal on Otani. His interpreter was fired Wednesday after questions surrounding at least $4.5 million in wire transfers uh, from Otani's bank account to a bookmaking operation. Uh, Ipi Mizuhara, longtime friend and interpreter of Otani, occurred, incurred the gambling debts to a Southern California bookmaking operations that is under federal investigations, multiple sources told ESPN. How he came to lose his job started with reporters asking questions about the wire transfers. Initially, a spokesman for Otani told ESPN the slugger had transferred the funds to cover Ms. Mizuhato's gambling debts. The spokesman presented Mizuhato to ESPN for a 90-minute interview Tuesday night, during which Mizuhato laid out his account in great detail. However, as ESPN prepared to publish the story Wednesday, the spokesman disavowed Mizuhara's account and said Otani's lawyers would issue a statement. Quote, in the course of responding to recent media inquiries, we discovered that Shohei has been a victim of a massive theft, and we are turning the matter over to the authorities. Read the statement from Burke Brettler, LLP. Spokesman declined to answer any further questions, and the statement did not specify whom they believe perpetrated the alleged theft. When asked by ESPN on Wednesday afternoon after the Burke Brettler statement if he had been accused of theft, theft, Mizuharo said he was told he could not comment, but declined to say by whom. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. So this is bizarre. So the questions come up. The interpreter and then a spokesman, who I'm guessing is not part of the Dodgers organization, a spokesman says, okay, you can have him for an interview, a 90-minute interview. What? Why would you do that? Like, why would you ever let the media have the key person in the case that's going to move forward? Like, I have no idea why you would do that. The only way I think you would do that is if you're Shohei Otani and you knew you were the one doing the gambling and Muzahara said, I'm going to take the fall. Let me go do an interview and I'll take the fall for everything. Right. And then, you know, they probably got wind of, you know, his, his, his accounts were probably not going to match up to any scrutiny. And we're going to probably point straight to Otani. And then lawyers got involved and said, you said some stuff you probably shouldn't have said. You screwed us. We're going to disavow anything you said and take over the case. That's my read on this. What do you think? 
that is I, you know me i'm not i'm not a conspiracy theory guy whatsoever but when i read through all this one and i it's just the more they're telling me that otani is not involved right the more i don't believe it i really don't uh the the first part of that where they offered him up to a 90 minute interview and then you know whatever time that passed after all of a sudden it's like no 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 we can't we can't use what he said we we've discovered something else and then there's like video of them in the dugout yesterday at the game, and it doesn't look like somebody who's about to accuse somebody of theft right. in a few hours. Exactly. And it's not like they didn't catch <laughs> wind of this before. Right. So it, none of it really adds up to me. Um, and, the, and then today it's like been revealed that apparently Shohei is not facing any discipline or believed he's not going to be under investigation by Major League Baseball or nothing. <laughs> of course and they he's immediately not. get that out there. Of course um, he's not. Yeah, it just to me it reads as this is the MLB's cash cow. He just yeah. got the largest contract in the history of uh sports essentially yeah. in in American sports. And even if he did anything, I don't think the MLB is going to let that get out. Um No. That's how it kind of reads to me. Yeah. Again, we, th- this could all just be a conspiracy and whatever and we're taking the bait. Uh, but the more they try to tell me that it's not anything to do with Otani, the less I'm starting to believe it. And by the way, um, the sources close to the gambling operation told ESPN that Bauer uh, dealt directly with Mizuhara. Bauer is part of the, the collective, the, I guess the gambling collective. The illegal, the illegal yeah, one. Who placed bets on international soccer matches and other sports, but not baseball, starting in 2021. Now, I'm not sure what baseball's bylaws are, but other sports... You can bet you on can, other sports. Yeah, you can bet on other sports other than baseball, but not with illegal bookmakers or offshore websites, obviously. That, that, that's bizarre. Like, gambling is legal now, like, in most places. You can, you know, you don't need to go to, you know, Vinnie Boom Bots to gamble anymore. That's one of the reasons they took it out of the um, the underworld. Right. And, and, and it, put it, there, and I think put it was, above board. I thought there was something here in the article. I'm reading through the ESPN article, which I think you are as well. Um, that he he started originally doing the bets. This is according to Mizuhara. He he started doing the gambling bets through DraftKings, I guess. Mm-hmm. And then eventually he started doing it to Bauer and assumed that that was fine or whatever. Um, so it initially started going through the right channels before he got to the illegal, I guess, website of all this whole thing. But still, it's yeah. it's bizarre. It's so bizarre, and the fact that like they're over there in Korea, and this is just all going on in the background, right? Um. It's just weird, like the, the the interpreter going standing up. I guess he stood up in front of the entire Dodgers yesterday and was like, "I'm a gambling addict." Like I would have loved to have seen. I, I want the video on that. Like my name you know. is Ippy. <laughs> my name is Ippy. I know. Like are we sitting and around I'm a, a gambling room? Holic. Like, <laughs> Hi, Ippy. Hi. It's okay. I hate. To We're make, all here I to hate, support you. I hate to make jokes about that, but I mean, I mean that's just what my mind was like telling me. Like, yeah, everybody, hi, Ippy. <laughs> we know who you are, by the way. You've been around here a while. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, yeah. What a weird, weird deal. Um, and when the money gets this crazy, it just weird stuff happens. Speaking of weird stuff happening uh, and terrible stuff, I mean, did you see the story on Cameron Sutton, the Detroit corner? I I did. I wrote about this a little bit yesterday for for on three, and I got the, I got like the phone, like the Twitter update, and it said. Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, do you know this man? Didn't even, like, open it or anything. And then I found out later. Um, it's Cam Sutton. Cam Sutton. So I guess he's um, he's under – he's got a warrant out for his uh, – is it is a warrant out for his arrest, I believe. Or yes. Or looking for him yes. for, for a domestic battery. violence against a woman in yeah, Lutz. domestic battery. Yeah. Right. So evidently, um, a couple weeks ago, they found this, this woman – uh, domestically battered. According to a spokesman, deputies responded to, this is from the Times, call from Sutton's home in Lutz on March 7th. When he arrived at 453, they found a woman in the residence who had been battered. Sutton left the home before authorities arrived and repeated attempts to reach him by phone have been unsuccessful. Uh, Sutton has not returned to the home or another one he owns in Pinellas County. He played six seasons with the Steelers before joining the Lions last year. Played all 20 of Detroit's games, including the playoff game. I think, um, uh, Evans beat him for a touchdown that that t- that touchdown in the uh, late in the game. Four days after the incident, the Lions acquired cornerback Carlton Davis in a trade with the Bucks. Oddly enough, 
Um, the Lions in a statement said, we became aware of the ongoing legal situation involving Cam Sutton this morning. We will continue to monitor the situation and we will not have further comment at this time. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, not good for Cam Sutton. That is not good for Cam Sutton and not good for the woman, obviously, that he battered and allegedly strangled and allegedly battered. So not good. Um, but boy, all kinds of interesting stories out there today uh, that we th- – many of which we don't like to talk about. That's Correct. that's that's part of it. Um, all right, let's take another break as uh, we try to run down some of our guests here. Uh, and uh, we'll come back on the other side, talk some golf and some other things that are going on. The Bolts, especially, they're playing out on the West Coast. We'll hit some of that. Anything you guys want to bring up, hit us up in the comments. You can do that on YouTube. You can do it on Twitter, at FanStreamJP, uh, at Nick Geddes News. So become part of the show. We enjoy you doing that. Um, we're live at Bow's Bar here. We are brought to you by the great folks at Italiano Insurance, who, boy, they helped me out so much. I recently had a... Um, an auto claim as I ran over something in the middle of I-4, shocking development. And uh, we, we had a few issues, and Charity did a great job. Uh, she saved me $1,000 getting me with this company and then did a great job helping me through this as well. So that's that's what you get with Italiano Insurance. They've been in business for 60 years. They're a family-owned company. Um, they're very involved in the community, and they really care. And you'll get great customer service. You'll talk to a human being, uh, which you're not going to get at other insurance companies. Trust me on that. It's Italiano Insurance. Back in three. Stay with us. JP here for the Jeeves Law Group and my man, Scott Jeeves. If you're going to hire an attorney, do you want some guy looking for a quick settlement and a quick buck, or do you want an attorney with some chops? Scott is a board-certified civil trial lawyer and a certified circuit court mediator. Been practicing in the Tampa Bay area for over 30 years. He is a peer-reviewed AV preeminent rated civil trial lawyer. They just don't hand out those classifications. He's been the lead class action counsel on many complex consumer protection cases and has handled hundreds of serious personal injury cases. He's dedicated his career to protecting injured victims and is committed to vigorously representing you. We're local, we're trusted, and we get results. Personal injury and personal attention. Call for a free case evaluation. That's 888-9-JEEVES. That's 888-9-J-E-E-V-E-S. The Jeeves Law Group. JP here for the Geddes Gordon Real Estate Group and our good friend Jane Geddes. Folks, simply put, there is nobody like Jane. Jane is a former LPGA two-time major championship winner. She was also vice president of talent relations at WWE. She also has a law degree from Stetson. So if Jane can drain a 10-footer to win the U.S. Open and stare down Hulk Hogan in the boardroom, you want Jane on your real estate team to not only negotiate the best deal, but find you the perfect home or investment property. And when you work with the Geddes Gordon Group, you become part of the real estate family and get concierge services that include expertly staging marketing and preparing your home for sale. Advice on golf properties. Hey, you might even get some golf tips. Many of their clients become friends long after the sale or purchase is completed. It's all part of the deal. So if you're looking for that perfect home or investment property or try to get top dollar for your home, go with Jane Geddes and the Geddes Gordon Group because there's nobody like Jane. Call 813-485-6808 or go to geddesgordon.kw.com. That's G-E-D-D-E-S gordon.kw.com or call 813-485-6808. Everyone knows Italiano Insurance is your go-to for home insurance, but they also have an amazing team that focuses on business insurance. Yes, your business is most likely your biggest asset, so make sure you have the right coverage at the most competitive price. And if you started a side hustle recently, don't forget you need business insurance because if you get sued in this over-litigious society we live in, you could lose all your personal wealth. So get that business insurance. And for the best customer service, always choose Italiano. My representative, Charity, is amazing. I called her late on a Friday because my insurance was going to lapse. She stayed late until the job was done. You just don't find that anymore. Give them a call, 813-877-7799. That's 813-877-7799. Italiano Insurance. Let's go. Right now. Back to the show on FanStream Sports. 
All right, welcome back to the J.P. Peterson Show as we come to you live from the Valspar Championship. Round one out here. It's an absolutely gorgeous day. Scoring uh, is going to be good today. Already, uh, Keith uh, Mitchell has a, uh, what is he, a 500 through the first seven? Yep, 500, still in the lead. Wow, very, very uh, nice. And the course out here is at absolutely perfect shape. The, the fairways are... Uh, uh, they're always gorgeous and lush. The greens are running really, really quick. The rough is up, but not as as thick as we've seen it at other times. So, you know, the typical winning score has been around uh, in this this iteration of the tournament has probably been around 14, 15. There's been some 19s. Um, so they might be chasing that this week. Uh, but Friday's going to be a lot of rain, which will soften up the course for the weekend. So might make it uh, a lot more gettable. But we'll see. It's um, – T- terrific terrific venue out here as well if you want to come out here there's you know we're at the frenchie's poolside grill so you can get all the great frenchie's food they start cooking it up here and they start smelling all the you know they they do the fried shrimp and the crab legs and everything the she crab soup oh very very nice and then they have all the other uh different viewing spots and you just need you don't need a hospitality ticket to get to these great areas where you can watch and drink and eat and have all the good good food all that stuff so, um, but you can also purchase some hospitality. I think you can still get some Hooters Owls Nest tickets. Um, so that's all available for the weekend. And and don't forget Cole Swindell Saturday night, um, big concert here, and the weather should be good for for the weekend as well. So hopefully not too much too much rain on on Friday. They'll be they'll certainly be able to handle it though. It's a great course. Um, a couple of notes from you commenters. Want to get to that as well. Um, Rick says Otani interpreter the ultimate fall guy. He lost more than the raised payroll. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I bet that four point million five million dollar number is going to go up, like dramatically. Yeah, I wonder if Otani wishes he didn't defer uh, his entire contract, you know, to like well, eight years from now or whatever it was. <laughs> well, it's interesting that he did. Like that's a, that was a weird move. Like, why would you do that? He gave the Dodgers the ability to uh, to this year and in the few in the in the near future, I guess, to put a capable roster around him. That's what he did by doing that. Yeah, but this this kind of throws a little bit of something into it, right? Like, if he doesn't have the money, can't get sued for it, or you know, I don't I don't know. It, it's just, there, there's know. a lot more nothing, to come on this story. Gonna, nothing's going to happen to Otani though. He's going to be protected at all cost. Oh, I agree. I agree. Uh, Jordan G says, you guys see the Marlins drop all you can eat and drink seats available every game for only $52. I did see this. This is interesting. It's a, yeah, as he said, it's an all you can eat seat starting at $52. It goes through the seventh inning, uh, includes water, cookies, peanuts, popcorn, hot dogs, chili dogs, chili nachos, cheeseburgers, nachos, and non-alcoholic beverages. Non-alcoholic bevies. But I believe uh, there's like an upgrade where you can get, um, alcohol uh added on to it but if you just break it down it's legit it's logistically like you're spending 26 dollars to go to a game and then 26 dollars all you can eat so seems like a nice little deal well yeah when a hot dog costs eight bucks correct give me the rundown get, again you get hot chili dogs hot dogs pizza yeah yeah it's like 10 items there uh but it says that you can only get four items from the concession stand per trip well, actually, no, it's per trip, actually. I thought it was like that's all you can get through the game. So it's per trip. You can get four items. So, Oh, who's this guy? What do you want? What do you want? Oh, it's Rondé Barber, Hall of Famer. Here, sit right here. Oh. How are you, partner? Good. We're just talking about the Shohei Otani story. Oh, God. <laughs> do you have an interpreter or a handler anywhere? <laughs> I do. Yeah, do you? Yeah. His name is Claudia. <laughs> Claudia, make sure that she doesn't get you in here. There we go. There we go. What's up, partner? How are you? How are you? You're not busy, though, are you? No, not yet. Uh, Past chairman's lunch. Cashmere Keith is. One minute. Oh, okay. Well, give me, give me a couple of minutes. Sir. Thank <laughs> you so much for dropping. job. Cashmere Keith's killing it out there. Who is Keith? Keith. Is it Keith? Who is it? Who's Keith got the. Mitchell. Keith, Keith Mitchell. Mitchell's got the leaderboard. Five, five under after seven. Wow. After seven. This course doesn't produce that. No. <laughs> no, it does not. Uh, oh. So it, they're, they're tearing it up. Uh, what a beautiful day! What a yeah. beautiful setup! Yeah, we uh, we got at least one good day right now. <laughs> well, Friday's no gonna front. be no good, but no. I thought the weekend's gonna be yeah, okay though, right? But tomorrow could be an, an issue with. Uh, I mean, it'll be fine. <sighs> Tracy has all the contingencies, but um, 
uh, if you get rain with 156 player field and you got to move it to Saturday and you know, they, that be a long that, day that, Saturday that ends up being a long, long day. And obviously we got Cole Swindell Saturday night. And yeah. so, you know, we're, we're trying to play on a 3d uh, chessboard right now. <laughs> make, yeah, I mean, sure so, everything works out. I know. So to. I'm trying to like do a comparison between football. Like, you know, when the games are, if, oh, there, yeah. if there's a little bit of rain, you know how to handle it. Oh yeah. This deal is just, there's a lot of moving parts. Right. There's it, a lot of moving well, parts when you get bad weather. Rain is different than electricity, too. Yeah. So if you get electricity in the air, then you got to move everybody off the course and yeah, send right. them over parking, stay in their car. We're cars. not expecting that, though. Right. No, okay, not good. expecting that. So, so the rain is fine. You just, you just don't need wet. any lightning. Just get people get wet. If you get some electricity, then it gets a little complicated. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, this is what, your third year as chairman? It's my third year as chairman. I, me and Tracy had an argument how long I've been on the board, but it <laughs> feels like a decade. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they had to change change. the rules to keep you on, right? Yeah, well, yeah. you know, uh, how are you liking this? I got, I got a lot of people in my, uh, yeah. they're back and back me up on that. I think you're gonna win that, vote. right? Um, <laughs> no, I'm loving it. It's uh, takes up a good amount of my time, but it's uh, something I really enjoy doing. I mean, I, you know, I've never really had a, you know, foundation or anything that, you know, otherwise tied me to Tampa, but this right. certainly does. Um, and me and John Astra, my co-chair, uh, we have the same vision of what our group should look like and how this tournament should continue to progress forward in the current climate of professional golf. Current climate of professional golf. <laughs> so, right. so yeah. we're, we're working we're working through that and it's nice to have uh, some continuity in, in, in our leadership right now uh, we, you know we've had great general chairman in the past Larry Morgan Les Muma obviously Keith Robinson Jim uh, ice from pitch a penny all preceded me and they they took this tournament to where it, where, where it is now and uh it's our job John and I's job to, to maintain it the corporate sponsorships are through the roof. Yeah. And that's, I think, where you guys have really uh, put a solid footing down here the last few years, right? We, we don't have we don't have a tournament without them. Yeah. You know, our partners is, I mean, JP, you can go back to the COVID year, you know, the pandemic oh year when all of those sponsors stayed with us. That's none crazy. Of them, none of them asked for their money back. How'd and you do that? I, you know, begged and pleaded. And, <laughs> and you're running and, barber. Right. Tra- you're running tra- barber. Tra- Tracy West is very good at her job, yes, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and then, uh, since then it's just continued to grow and, and and the only way our costs are incrementally increasing so our revenue has to incrementally increase and the only way to do that is to keep buying in and digging deeper into our, our local communities our local uh businesses that want to be part of this and that's why we keep growing that's why we keep building new chalets like we did on on 18 this week that's why we introduced the copperhead club yeah uh, and the renovated packards uh to to draw more people out to this tournament and give them even bigger and better experiences, and I think we've I think we've accomplished that this year. Yes, you have. So give us some give them some of the highlights and what they'll get out here uh, with uh, hospitality tickets and even without them, just the yeah. general tickets. There's so much to do. Out yeah. There. So like every PGA Tour event, Thursday and Sunday are the days that you can always find tickets. Friday and Saturday are, are pretty much the the. Um, the shared hospitality, like the Hooters Owls yeah. Nest, uh, the uh, Snake Pit Hopper Pass on 17 and 16, it was sell out really, right, right really away. quick. Yeah. Uh, probably the only thing available is the Copperhead Club for Friday and Saturday if you're looking for a high high end ticket, because uh, all the private hospitalities are, are, all, are all sold out. But grounds tickets are always available. There's always tickets to, yeah. to get to get in here. Um, um, and they got the village over there where kids right. can do a lot of different things. Yeah. Kids get in free, right? Yep, kids. Uh, get in free with a paying adult, with JP. Paying adult, of course, yeah. <laughs> That's what I meant. JP. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. <laughs> Kids get in free with a paying adult. Uh, yeah, and, and obviously the best day to be here is Saturday because of how good of a day that it is. There's so much to do on and around the course. Even if you're not a, a huge golf fan, uh, families can come out here and enjoy it. And then, of course, enjoy uh, Bow Star Live presented by Chick-fil-A. Uh, uh, Cole Swindell concert, which I think is going to be awesome. I've been I've been doing my research. I've been listening to him for like a month. He's really good. <laughs> He's so this good. just in. He's, He's so, really good. He's so good. I saw. I think I saw him at a, at a festival when he was just starting out, and he was just tremendous. And I'm like, that dude's going to be a star, right? That dude's going to be a star. He absolutely is. All right. Um, can we talk a little bit of football? Sure. You know, the, the the Bucks resigned a bunch of guys. I don't know if you heard. Um, um, who? Anybody important? Baker, dude. Uh, Mike Evans. <laughs> yeah. Mike Evans, dude. And I said this. A Levante guy. Yeah. I've been over there and just, you know, talking to all these guys and Baker, we, we got a one-on-one with him and, and he is the kind of the identity of this team. I mean, sure. Tristan t- talks about that all the time and having him locked up for a very reasonable amount of money, especially this year on the cap, they've been able to bring every- guys taking less money yeah. to bring the band back together. You don't see that in the NFL anymore. I, you just don't see that. I think, I think not enough people are talking about 
Jason Light and Mike Greenberg. Exactly. In the NFL. Yes. I mean, yes. look who they've drafted. I mean, obviously, John Spitek and Mike Beal, those guys as well. Um, Rob uh, McCartney, Jackie, the, the, the whole group. They've drafted and maintained a roster better than I think most of the NFL could ever hope for. And yeah. nobody talks about them. Everybody talks about all these playoffs other four years in a row right. don't happen. Right. They're yeah. the only team in the NFC they, to do they, it. They talk about big splash moves, but just the consistency oh, yeah. that, that that Jason and his group have, have provided Tampa in the last four years is it's unprecedented. Yeah. Um, uh, be able to keep that many guys together and then, you know, have them want to stay here. I mean, Mike could obviously have gone and tested the market. I mean, right. he's 30 years old whatever. and got more money, and got more way. money Absolutely. Right. gone and, 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 and been whatever, but and you know, Baker too. Sure, Baker could have. I mean, yes. Atlanta probably was in the running for for Baker. Mayfield, look at the Cousins right? deal, and look at Cousins' yeah. deal exactly. Uh, but Baker's here, and this feels like where Baker should belong. I mean, right. he, he's told me as much uh, that he loves it here and wants to be here and wants to like stay here, build a home, build family, and, and life here. So uh, you understand, um, um, I understand at least, and I think you do too. The, the job that's being done in the front office. Continuity wins in right. this league. hundred percent. Turnover doesn't win. And right. obviously 25% of the league, probably like 80% of the league turned over this off season. This, yeah. this one was ridiculous. Um, but usually 25, 30% of the teams, your, your team is turned over year over year. And so trying to even just rebuild that little bit of your team and getting them on board with the other 60, 75% of the, of the, of the roster is hard. So when you're able to get guys back and, you know, kind of just, you know, follow the same path that they've been on. I, I mean, I don't know why not the Bucks, right? Yeah, I agree. I just, I think that's the thing. It's you, you get all those guys back. It's not as flashy, but I think it's more effective. And and the, the where they did make some changes and needed to be at is because the past defense was bad last right. year. It just was ranked in I think twenty seventh right. at the end of the year. So Carlton is gone. Yep. You bring in uh, Bryce Hall mm -hmm. from the Jets. Um, I forget the guy they got from the Texans. I forget his name, but you bring back Jordan Whitehead, which yep. I think is That's huge. Big, big talk, talk about this revamp secondary. Yeah, Jordan Whitehead. He's I was old. actually pissed two years ago at yeah. Jason when they let him get away. I mean, obviously the Jets threw a lot of money at him, at right. him so I understand it. But when doing my film sessions with the Bucks every week, like I could have done one. That last year he was here, I could have done one every single week on Jordan Whitehead. Wow. He's just that kind of guy like the way the energy that he plays with uh is not matched uh obviously him sitting next to Antoine this year was going to be, you know, it's yeah. gonna be like, special it's going to be pretty hard to to to, to quant or even qualify but definitely quantify how impactful those two guys playing together are going to be on our secondary but yeah Carlton I always loved Carlton I love yeah. the way he played yeah. I love the, yeah. the way he prepared I wish he would have stayed healthy I wish he would have taken the ball away a little bit more but he's a heck of a football player but at the same time you just signed Jamel Dean you know you understand that you know results matter and you know we didn't have production in the secondary so there was going to be turnover at corner it just it, it's just the way of the league you think zion's to, ready you have to make those decisions zion is close to being ready yeah. but i if he's given the chance and the the real pressure to perform is put on him mm -hmm. like it's not oh i'm backing up carlton right i'm backing up jamel uh no it's your starting job to to take I think he takes it. He's, he's he is a really talented kid. You see it in flashes. He just has to find consistency. I mean, you know that watching me back in the day, JP. Yeah. It just yeah. It takes a couple of years to find consistency. And once you do and the confidence is real and true, then you just go out and start playing. Because damn, he's talented, dude. He's big, he's fast, and um, you know, he has a willingness to do everything that the position requires. So yeah, he should he should be a good player. We had uh Sal Pal on on uh, Monday and whooped my ass in tennis yesterday. <laughs> Um, at least you're not know. playing pickleball. Yeah. Pickleball is the number one injury sport in America. Is it really in America? And you're old, JP. Yeah, I know. So, so don't, but I'm, I'm still I'm playing tennis. You know, our tennis uh, tennis players, we're we're still a little arrogant about the whole pickleball. Thing. Yes, we're like pickleball is for people who can't play tennis. <laughs> okay, I'm just uh, there. I said it. I said it. Is it mean? Is that mean? Did I come out mean? I'm, offend I'm offended. I didn't. Uh... <laughs> and Nick's offended. Nick's offended. Sorry for you pickleball people. But can you play pickleball, Nick? I, I do play pickleball you, because you play I tennis. I, no, I stink at no, tennis. Can't, yeah, see, yeah. My point. So, I, but that you pickleball people have your thing. That's fine. I play golf. <laughs> you play golf. <laughs> Don't play pickleball, right? Play pickleball. That's what we're saying. Anyway, so Sal Pal said, you know, care about the Kirk Cousins thing. He's like, once Baker and Mike are signed and everybody they brought back, the Bucks are the leader in the NFC South for this year and probably the next two years to come. Yeah. Would you agree with that? I would, 
I would agree with that. I mean, just I respect off, Atlanta. I respect right. what they've done. They've sure. got a good football team. Absolutely, they do. They got a lot of talent on their football team. That just has to it has to materialize itself. Right. You can't discount what the same team, essentially the same team, has done for the last four years. Um, we've gotten uh, uh, better on both sides of the ball with the draft, uh, I, I think, and yeah. then uh, being able to find ways to win games in the NFC South and win the division. Uh, uh, this this many years in a row and, and returning pieces, yeah, you're the favorite. Why wouldn't you be? Um, we said we, you and I were talking about this last year when everybody was picking us to win three, you know, yeah. picking the Bucks to win three games. Like the roster's too talented exactly. for them to win just three games. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Just look at the roster yeah. and not forget about Tom Brady uh, being replaced by Baker Mayfield or at the time Kyle Trask. Yeah. Um, uh, forget about that. Just look at the roster, top to bottom, and it's a very good roster. Again, credit to to the front office for putting this this team together, and that hasn't changed this year. Agreed. Right? There, you you lose Devin White, you know, you lose Carlton Davis, you know. There's 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 people that can replace them. De- Devin was a he was a minus. I'm, well, I'll there's a reason it. KJ Britt stayed exactly. towards the end of the year, exactly. and Devin, I, I will not ever discount. Devin White's talent. Yeah, because I remember there. T- three years ago, two years ago, I, before the preseason, I said Devin White's going to be the best middle linebacker in, fo- in football. He had the most sacks by far of any inside linebacker in his first two years. I think he had nine that one year, uh, and he was just a, a, a different, different player the last two years. I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, it, it, it happens sometimes. Yeah, it, maybe it's the money. Maybe it's distractions. Right. Who knows? I know you got to get going. Um, but one quick thing: Do you have any idea? about the future of the PJ tour <laughs> and live golf. Well, I mean, you know, all these guys, yeah. they talk, do you have any, I mean, the, this meeting between the shake and, and the PGA players, I think was something as Rory said, that was desperately needed. Yeah. I think personally, Greg Norman's gotten in the middle of this and screwed everything up. <laughs> and I think it's more about him. He made it about him and destroying the PGA tour. I think when you bring the money people together with the PGA tour players, I think you have a chance to get everybody back together. All right and be happy again and this tour this event in particular right. will thrive I, I have the privilege to stand around and talk to some of these these tour players and the overall consensus then it's not even like there's nobody that disagrees they have to find a way to get the guys back together yes the, the golf is a big distraction right now with yep. uh, with with all that's going on between both of these tours and to be honest with you JP it's not the biggest sport in, in America, right? No, it's not the it's biggest not. sport in the world. It's, no. it's a niche sport for people that really enjoy it. And, you know, obviously we, we do it a little bit different here. We bring it out and make it the funnest event on tour. Most yeah. colorful PGA Tour event in the world. Fans first. Right, fans first. Yeah. And so we, we, we we're able to draw. But art and golf fans, it's it's not that big of a, a – It's a great point. It's not that big yeah. of, a, of a percentage of the sports viewing population. So this distraction is just hurting everybody. Yeah. It's hurting the business. Um, I will say – that they're at least moving. This meeting uh, 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 on Monday or Tuesday, whenever that was down there, um, it's the first step. And I know this feels like it's been going on forever because it has been going on forever and it's affecting us. Obviously, mm-hmm. it's affecting the host organization. It's affecting the PGO Tour in general. Uh, but the longer this goes on, it feels like it should be closing, getting closer to a resolution. I would say this last meeting was the first first step. Yeah, I it's, agree. It's we're not we're not anywhere close to being done, but at least there's something in motion. Uh, and in the meantime, we just got to keep on doing what we can do. And you know, I, I'm in charge of our 200 person, 200 plus person Copperhead uh, group and our board. And my message to them has been. Let's just control what we can control. Right. Right. We don't have a say in this. Uh, obviously, we've had our meetings with the tour. We've had we had some this week with the tour and just finding clarity. Um, but we also have a you know, we have to go on with business. Right. Dallas Bar is up after 2025 for us. And there's uncertainty with them on their return from the PGA the tour. Yeah, yeah, for their sponsorship with the PGA tour. And so and they've lost we, a lot of big yeah, we have to talk, yeah. we have to talk through our contract negotiations through this this disruption in golf and it's it's obviously it's difficult it's, it's just, it, this should be an easy agreement to make between us and Valspar to, to renew but there's a wrench in it right now we just have to work our way through it and i think we're we're, we're, we're making our well our with way. leadership like you they can get it done jay monahan i don't know that's me talking <laughs> not him that's me talking not him. and greg norman those two guys let's move on from them get somebody else in there to get this done well partner thank you very Everybody. much you got the movie coming out on saturday did, well it's the premiere uh it's uh it's a gasparilla film festival uh uh after uh re-showing prototype obviously the premiere was yeah. uh right before uh, right after hall of fame but uh 
Stephen Lynch is uh, he, he put it in for for Gasparilla. It's his first ever Gasparilla Film Festival nice. show. So uh, I think it's, it's tomorrow, it's Saturday. I'm sorry, uh, at AMC West Shore at two uh, two thirty. So I keep thinking yeah. it's Friday. Right. So for every yeah, no, right. if it was Friday, we'd be <laughs> we'd, we'd be raining. We'd be even a little wet right now. <laughs> right. Um, but the but the uh, it's uh, it's an opportunity to people who didn't get to see Prototype on the big screen to go see Prototype. I haven't seen it yet, so oh, I feel bad, but it. I got to go see it. Go see it. Go see it. Go see it. All right, Porter, thank see you so much for stopping by. You're the best. See you later. The great Ronnie Barber right there. I'll tell you, uh, he is taking this tournament to new heights and um, really fantastic. I know you enjoyed that Bucks talk too, didn't you? Oh, of great. course. Of course right? I enjoyed that Bucks talk. He, I've, also, I, I've, I've also enjoyed his brother like riling up like everybody in New York <laughs> and at what, ESPN. Oh, what, what? yeah, what did he do? Remember that Where, when Saquon signed with the Giants? Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Tiki had the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you're dead, you're dead Saquon. To me. You're dead what to me. Joke. Come and on. then Ryan Clark got involved, and then Tiki oh responded God. back. Shut the hell up, Ryan Clark. You sound like a fool. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, was, come on. That was just was, one of those things that you're you're a, you're an ex giant. You represent giant fans like me. Like I talk about Florida State. It wasn't an objective thing as a as a radio talk show host. It was just like he was echoing what mo- a lot of giant fans were thinking. You're dead to me. Right. It, it, I, I, the way I equated it was like, you know, I'm sure Giants fans did feel that way. And that's what Tiki said he was speaking for Giants fans. Right. Like, think of like exactly. your favorite Bucks player. Like what ha- What if Mike said, yeah, I'm going to go play for the Saints. Your what dad le- yeah. What if he left you in the offseason just now and said, I'm going to go play for the Saints. You right. think every Bucks fan was going to be like immediately like at one day they would. But you think immediately every Bucks no. fan would be like, oh, yeah. Mike, thank you so much for everything you did. We wish you well. No, they probably wouldn't because he went to New Orleans. Right. Yeah, it's that's just silly. That's just silly. But you know what? That's what sells in uh in uh radio, radio land. Stir the pot. That's what you gotta do. You gotta stir the pot, right? Sometimes right. we have to do that. What are you laughing at? It's not me. La- yeah, I'll see you laughing at something. I'm not All laughing right. at anything. All right. Um because we're stirring the pot, right? All right, we'll take a break. Um let me come back and react to it to some of the things Rondé said. You guys can comment in as well. Uh, and it, it's not, you know, Rondé will, will call it out when he sees the Bucks are doing things wrong or it doesn't look good. So it's, this is not just some false praise from a former player. Trust me, he believes it. And I believe it too. And he was right on last year, as were we. So, yeah, that's uh, – if you're a Bucks fan, I think you got to be very, very uh, pumped up about this upcoming season all right quick break we'll come back we'll check the leaderboard out here at the Valspar championship we'll uh check in with the rays and the bolts as well we're brought to you by the gold and diamond source folks it's their 40th anniversary going on right now they have a big sale going on this month 40 uh, percent off most of the items in there so go check it out and uh go see the folks over there julie and steve weintraum tell them jp sent you uh back in three to the Valspar. stay with us JP here for the Jeeves Law Group and my man, Scott Jeeves. If you're going to hire an attorney, do you want some guy looking for a quick settlement and a quick buck, or do you want an attorney with some chops? Scott is a board-certified civil trial lawyer and a certified circuit court mediator. Been practicing in the Tampa Bay area for over 30 years. He is a peer-reviewed AV preeminent rated civil trial lawyer. They just don't hand out those classifications. He's been the lead class action counsel on many complex consumer protection cases and has handled hundreds of serious personal injury cases. He's dedicated his career to protecting injured victims and is committed to vigorously representing you. We're local, we're trusted, and we get results. Personal injury and personal attention. Call for a free case evaluation. That's 888-9-JEEVES. That's 888-9-J-E-E-V-E-S. The Jeeves Law Group. JP here for the Geddes Gordon Real Estate Group and our good friend Jane Geddes. Folks, simply put, there is nobody like Jane. Jane is a former LPGA two-time major championship winner. She was also vice president of talent relations at WWE. She also has a law degree from Stetson. So if Jane can drain a 10-footer to win the U.S. Open and stare down Hulk Hogan in the boardroom, you want Jane on your real estate team to not only negotiate the best deal, but find you the perfect home or investment property. And when you work with the Geddes Gordon Group, you become part of the real estate family and get concierge services that include expertly staging, marketing, and preparing your home for sale. Advice on golf properties. Hey, you might even get some golf tips. Many of their clients become friends long after the sale or purchase is completed. 
It's all part of the deal. So if you're looking for that perfect home or investment property or try to get top dollar for your home, go with Jane Geddes and the Geddes Gordon Group because there's nobody like Jane. Call 813-485-6808 or go to geddesgordon.kw.com. That's G-E-D-D-E-S gordon.kw.com or call 813-485-6808. Everyone knows Italiano Insurance is your go-to for home insurance, but they also have an amazing team that focuses on business insurance. Yes, your business is most likely your biggest asset, so make sure you have the right coverage at the most competitive price. And if you started a side hustle recently, don't forget you need business insurance because if you get sued in this over-litigious society we live in, you could lose all your personal wealth. So get that business insurance. And for the best customer service, always choose Italiano. My representative, Charity, is amazing. I called her late on a Friday because my insurance was going to lapse. She stayed late until the job was done. You just don't find that anymore. Give them a call, 813-877-7799. That's 813-877-7799. Italiano Insurance. Let's go. Right now. Back to the show on Fan Stream Sports. Absolutely picture-perfect Chamber Commerce Day here in Palm Harbor. And uh, Keith Mitchell is tearing up the Copperhead are, course. Six are we, uh, under par. Are we are we back? Sorry uh, about that. Uh, my my laptop just completely like blacked out freeze? just for a second and froze. So apologies that we came back, I think, through the commercial break there. Okay. Yeah, I think we're my, back. Uh, Sounded think, good to me anyway. On this it, end. It, I guess okay, good. Because I was like looking at a black screen and heard nothing. So all right. Anyways, continue. <laughs> just wanted to make sure I was all good on my end. <laughs> Well, that's what I'm trying to. I, I was setting up here today, and um, everything looked fine for like two minutes, and then my computer screen just goes black. Like yeah, for mine, no reason, mine literally just didn't did the touch same anything. Thing. It just says hibernating and does the the spiral of death, and I'm like, oh great. And then you just gotta kind of wait for it till it decides to to jump back right. in. So, yeah, not a good feeling when you're doing a live show, is it? No, and I'm like, the whole system <laughs> runs through my laptop, and all of a sudden I heard nothing, and I was like, oh, crap, we're in the middle of a commercial, and now well, it's not the commercials not didn't stop on this end. Everything was good. All right, so, great. Uh, great. Everything's good. Um, yes, we are here at the first round of the Vals Bar. Keith Mitchell is absolutely torching the Copperhead course. He is six under par through ten holes. Just made the turn, started on the back nine. So um, let me take a look at his card right here and just see how the hell he's doing this. So I know most of these holes. We've played so many times here. Um, birdie 10, the downhill par, par uh, four to get it, get it going. And then 12, the uh, par, the par five, number 11, which is usually reachable in two. I don't know how far it's playing today. And then went on a three birdie run of 12, 13, and 14. Um, the par five, 14th, and uh, that's the one that's kind of over the water that can be reachable in two as well. So he birdied that one, birdied 16, which is the hardest hole in the course. So turns in 30 on the, and then birdies the par five, number one, it's kind of down the hill, one of the easier holes on the course. So he's now on the front nine and is at six under par. Wow. That's a, that's a hell of a front nine. Um, shoot 30 on the front nine. So that's Keith Mitchell uh, tearing up the Copperhead course. Mackenzie Hughes from Canada is also five. Well, he's five under par, and he started on the on the back nine as well. So that back nine, uh, giving up a lot of birdies on the back nine. Brendan Todd at four under par uh, through 11. So that group is smoking it. Having Adam Svensson at four under, Sam Ryder at three under, Davis Riley three under as well. Sam Burns, two-time winner, back-to-back winner of this championship, is at three under par. Let me see if I could find some of the other uh, big names. Strep, uh, Sepp Straka's two under par. Cam Young, two under par. He's through 12. Uh, we'll see some of the other names that you might recognize. Oh, Gi- Justin Thomas is one under par. Started on the back nine. He's through 13, so he just kind of started his round, Justin Thomas. Tony uh, Finau's even. Well, yep, Fina, all right, even um, we got some of the bigger names going off this afternoon. We'll get to some of those. I'll give you some of their starting times here. Um, there's a good group going off. There. Yeah, there's uh, yeah. Ke- Nick Taylor, Keegan Bradley and Jordan Spieth. One of the feature groups is at 134. 
Okay. Uh, and before them at 123, Brian Harmon, Taylor Moore, and Xander Shoffley. Yeah, that's the big one right there. So those Xander are the two Shoffley. big groups right there. Finishing second uh, last week at the players or third. Did you finish T2 or three? Second. Right. Yeah, T2 with uh, Wyndham Clark, who uh, lipped out for, for a playoff. It's a hell of a finish last week. I don't know if we're going to be able to top that one here at the Valspar Championship. But. You got to get a playoff or something like the other like the other year. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, it's fantastic. And it's really the, the snake pit, as they say, uh, 16, 17, and 18. Really kind of, you know, you can follow it real easy, just right, right around the bend there and up the hill. So great, great vantage points. And, you know, you don't have to have a, 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 a hospitality ticket to be in some of the, I think it's the, used to be the Michelob tent where the public was invited. You could see the whole thing. And then, of course, they have some bleachers there for general tickets that you can post up at as well. So, hey, by the way, we had, we had breaking raise news happen through the break. Uh, oh, another injury. Another injury. shocking development. Uh, Jonathan Aranda this time. Uh, what? Bro- broken right ring finger. God. Fielding a ground ball of all things. Broke a and, finger. Yeah. And he has to have surgery. He's going to be out for four to six weeks. So he will not be with the club to start the season, which joins Johnny DeLuca and Josh Lowe on that list. Um, so here we go. Here we go again with the injuries. Now it's happening to the, it's always the pitchers, and now it's happening to the batters in the most obscure ways. So who yeah. does that make room for? Is that? Uh, I mean, I knew that they probably were going to put Cam and Arrow and Triple A to start. Uh, does this expedite him a yeah. little bit? I mean, Good you'd thing. have to think so. Do they want to start him at the big league level right away? I don't know. Uh, this probably would guaranteed Meade a spot on the roster, if anything. I would yeah. have to think. I think he was um, going to make it anyway, though, wasn't he? He probably was going to make it anyway, but I think this guarantees it. Um, maybe they opt to go to a, another outfield spot and Palacios gets it. I don't mean, who knows, but because that would, because they still have Rosario who can, has the versatility and positional stuff. Um, but yeah, it's another lefty that's out of your lineup. And I thought Aranda, I mean, this is kind of a setback because I think this was the first year I thought he was going to get some, like, some decent playing time. Yeah. At the big leagues, and now he's behind schedule, so that stinks. But yeah, the injury's piling up already. It's kind of just—it's already got a bad vibe this year, doesn't it? It's got a it bad does. vibe. It does. It just—it's it, like, you know, I think it's because it's been two years in a row. It's been of, a great time for him to of, sell the team. Perfect. <laughs> the two years in a row of disappointment, and so I think we're already carrying that. And like you started out so great last year with the whole 13 and 0 start and we know that that's not happening ever again that was like once in a lifetime mm-hmm. and so like i feel like anything that starts it's going to feel like a letdown true you know and then you have the injuries on top of it like your aces are not here yeah feels like that kind of year so but we're pulling back next year so Apparently we have that so. to look forward we don't get it done this year we're pulling we back. have that to look forward to well great Correct. fantastic um so, yeah, this has been updated 25 minutes ago. USF fans, if you are a season ticket holder, check your emails immediately because you have until 2 o'clock to buy your NIT tickets for Sunday night's game against VCU at the Yingling Center. Yep. So I think this is going to sell out, don't you? Jimmy Lighthall was a little bit uh, uh, less positive, but I think it's going to sell out. He's, of course, he's, he's called a lot of games in an empty arena, so he's probably got I mean, PTSD. I mean, if they would have had that UCF game at home, it would have been nuts, I feel Oh, like. my God. Nuts. It was nuts over there. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. I did. That was, that was well. fun. You see that, that game? That was fun. Yeah. And my, my, UCF you know, my, got their ass kicked. Yeah, my uh, my uh, my UCF brethren are all just like, oh, we didn't, we didn't care, you know. We didn't, Oh, that the old bowl game, we didn't care. We didn't care. Uh, Okay, we're mo- right. We were motivated. Oh, we're in the Big Twelve, so screw you. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Hey, can always come back. I, to I, that. I, I did like what Amir Abdur Rahim said after when he was like, you know, he's going to talk to Johnny Dawkins about uh, making sure they can keep this game on or get this game back oh, on the calendar. Oh, good. good. I yeah, hope that UCF. No I hope that come UCF on. is gonna is gonna oblige as well on their end because I because it's probably not going to happen in football. I think we can we can yell all we want, but it's not going to happen in football. But in college basketball, like, come on. Why why would you not play a home and home? I mean, every year. I mean, how many how many games are you assured of a sellout? None. None. Why would you not do that's a that's a sure sellout at at, at both barns, right? Correct. Correct. Right? And both and both had really good atmospheres this year. Yeah. Both did. 
Yeah. So why wouldn't you just do a home and home? If you're an athletic director, why would you, you have the, you know, the ability to schedule what 10, 15 non-conference games. Right. And you can get a sellout every year. Why would you not do that? Yeah. It's just great. It's just in general, it's great interest too. in your in your yeah. program when those two teams play each other. So yeah, I, I hope they figure something out. Uh, but yeah, USF took care of business the other night and they beat, FAU, they beat Florida State, and they beat UCF this year. Uh, so I guess we they got to call them the state champs. We can't see them play Florida. Florida's the uh, Florida and Stetson. The Stetson, what are they? The Hatters. The Hatters are in. They they're they're in the tournament. I didn't even realize that. I was like Stetson's basketball team is in the tournament. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we got to. They think they're a 16 seed, so they're going to be uh fighting upwards. Clearly. Yeah, yeah. In the tournament, but uh, I guess we'll be rooting for them to pull off a miracle. Uh, and yeah. Florida gets has to play Colorado, I believe. Yeah, did Colorado win last night? It's Colorado beat Boise, so. So they'll play Colorado without their big center, but Z didn't think that was too much of a loss. So. No, I, I think Florida still. Um, Florida, actually, I'm, I'm more concerned for them against Colorado than I would be in round two against Marquette. I've watched a few of them. They, they play good against, like, upper competition. Yeah, uh, not great against the lower competition. So they got to get by. It's, Colorado's going to be a little bit of a test. All right. The Bulls will host VCU 730 Sunday night. So if you're a season ticket member, check your emails. Uh, Two o'clock, they go on sale to the general public. Right. Uh, students, more info will be sent in the morning as far as student tickets. So they are definitely going to have student tickets will be available. So don't worry about that. You'll get your shot. Um. So USF reached the NIT quarterfinals once in 1995 and eight previous trips. So, you know, there's still something left for this season, and there's no reason they can't go on a run. And th- they could win the NIT. That would be huge. Oh, it's a huge accomplishment. Huge accomplishment. Um, even even with the state of the NIT and what it is, I mean, still. Uh, the Bulls and Rams, members of the Atlantic 10 Conference, have four – Common opponents, VCU split a pair of games with Massachusetts, which defeated USF by 10 points in early December. Eh, different team. Rams lost by five to Memphis, which USF defeated. So a couple of common. So that'll be fun. That'll be fun. By the way, um, how about FSU baseball? Only undefeated team left in the nation. 19-0. and 0. And they're in the run. Yeah. So. I don't know where they are in the time. They forever weren't they, getting they ranked. They just got ranked, I think, this that? week finally. Yeah. And it was weird because, like, Florida, for example, um, Florida's 10 and 5, and they're ranked 8. Yeah. And Florida State's undefeated. And Must be actually, an ESPN poll. I actually, I don't even think they've been ranked. Like, in the latest, I don't think they've had the, uh, in the latest ranking, I don't even see them in here still. Well, the, uh, the, the, there's a, you know, a power rankings that, college baseball website does that's much more learned than this one they have fsu ranked number one in the power metrics and clemson ranked number two and Ooh. they're going to play this weekend fsu and clemson this weekend in baseball so yeah, clemson yeah now 13, we're a baseball yeah. school yeah now we're a base- baseball, <laughs> we're, baseball school we're finding all of them yeah um, a, um first day of spring practice was yesterday at fsu so uh the dj the dju era which will last one year well hey we don't even know if he's going to get the starting job you never know i think he will uh, I think he probably will yeah he's pretty much a lock for that but um, sorry sorry brock but uh yeah. <laughs> i don't think i don't think it's your year yeah and that's good you know let the freshman get their you know get his feet wet uh brock oh, he I, you know he's he was highly touted so maybe he gives him a run who knows and in, in, injuries can happen obviously so hey did um, you uh i know we had mentioned it throughout the show but you said you did you didn't got uh, because uh, y'all were pre-taped yesterday, so you didn't get to talk about the lightning the other night yeah. against uh, uh, Vegas, which I stayed up to watch the whole game. Yeah, I did too. And great they, win, great, great win. I, I can't believe they they went six for six. Yeah, they, they went, ran right through New York, Florida, and Vegas and got six points. I well, mean, and throw the Flyers in there. You know, I mean, they beat yeah. the Flyers seven to nothing. Yeah, this and started it, a whole thing. I mean, the yeah. deadline, the trade deadline. Uh, I mean, just for what Duclair, I mean, Duclair's got it's three insane. goals in four games has been it's fantastic. Um, I mean, I, I, I put this note out there. It's like, remember in recent years when the Lightning got players at the deadline, whether it was Blake Coleman, Goodrow, Paul Hagel, they all struggled right away. Um, and they didn't even hit their strides really until the playoffs, all four of those players. And Duclair's just come right in and they put him right on the top line. And he just fits like a glove, man. Yeah. I mean, what an impact. 
what an impact for what a third round pick. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, great, it's great move. Yeah, and Dumba's played well too. And Dumba's, yeah, I mean he's been fine. Uh, but the scoring that's gone up. I mean they've scored five goals now in like four four straight games in this four yeah. this four game winning streak. Kucherov, yeah. I mean, Kucherov is crazy. He was like trailing McKinnon by like seven points in the point in the point race three games mm-hmm. ago. And everybody was like, oh, it's McKinnon's, McKinnon's going to win the heart now. And then he just casually puts up 11 points in the last three games. <laughs> and it's not like any, it's not like I watched those games and I said, wow, that was a dominating effort. It really wasn't. But somehow he just put up 11 points, like out of nowhere. And now all of a sudden he's a point ahead of McKinnon in the points race. It's ridiculous. It, it's going to be a hell of a race. And Kucherov is just on another level right now. But I do believe... The declare addition is just it's just brought so much life to this team and spark. And what have we what have we been saying all year long? You know, this team just and Cooper's mentioned it a few times, they just don't have they're not playing with emotion, they're not playing with fire like they like they like they care. And there was a lot of that. And I think since Duclair got here, it just feels like they yeah. just picked up their energy level. Everything is better. It seems like what they added in the locker room, that's everything that I've heard, is him and Doomba, the energy they've added. I think Stampkos might have mentioned it maybe one of these games after it, that the energy that they've brought to the locker room has been a big lift. Like, and you remember, and it kind of says like what you said about a month ago, that things felt stale. Like, I think without saying it, that kind of feels like what Stamp Ghost was saying was like, yeah, we're, we were kind of a little stale. Uh, the energy that is, and these guys have brought new energy and, and it's translated to the ice and everybody else is playing better now. Yeah. Uh, and they didn't have to give up a whole lot. They didn't have a whole lot of ammunition Correct. And, um, you know, uh, that was a mag- magic stroke by Breeze Bois. Now, now the question is, with these three wins or four wins in a row, do you have a different viewpoint of this team heading into the playoffs? It's it's not a large enough sample size to say, okay, they're just that much better. Because from a number standpoint, it's off the charts. Right. It, and I, I don't think it's that much of an impact. But the other thing that's that you can't miss either is Vassy is playing better. Yeah, you know, it, that, it depends on 88 for me. Yeah. It all it all comes back to him. Yeah, and that fifteen day stretch where they had four games at home, you know, maybe that gave him a lot of of, of rest that he needed. I you know I think personally he probably came back too soon from the back surgery um, because that's just the way he does. And and nobody, it's hard to put. It's hard for anybody. I mean, the word I don't know Vassy that well, but people I talk to just like he's just a very stubborn dude. He has a totally different work ethic than anybody else, and you know he just. And that's not to dismiss anybody else. The dude's just maniacal about his workouts, and he just always wants to play. He would play every game if they would let him. And at some point, you know, as you approach thirty or get thirty years old, you got to cut it back. You got to cut it back. And I think he's he's maybe he may be finally learning to do that. But we'll see that. We'll right. See. And I think they're going to be able to get him off their off his feet realistically. I think for two games potentially here in the next three because they're going to get San Jose tonight. Uh, San Jose's got like 39 points or something. I mean, it's this is like an all-time bad team. Uh, so I would assume Johansson's going to be in there tonight. Vassy probably gets back in against the Kings on Saturday. And then on the back-to-back against Anaheim, they'll get Johansson in there. So you're going to get Vasilevsky off his feet, and then he's going to get a two-day rest and come back home and place Boston, which you know that this team's going to be up for. Oh. So. That's gonna be that's so gonna good. that's gonna be electric on Wednesday night against Boston. That game is on TNT, by the way. It's gonna be national tele television. Okay. Um, I was just perusing the uh, Stu Sternberg Q and A in the Times. Um, I thought this was kind of interesting. What th- uh, are three cool features of the new stadium site planned to be built adjacent to the trap if it gets built? Said so the biggest to me is going to be the connection between the stadium and let's call it the left field area and then to the outside to Second Avenue South. We're designing the stadium around that experience. It's just going to be one massive gathering, partying, fun, food, and everything else area. It'll be intimate as possible for something that has to fit thirty to forty thousand people. Uh, and and what we're planning to do with game day experience right outside the stadium, something on a big scale that will be a natural place for people to be before or after the games, or to linger as well. So that sounds fun. I guess that's kind of the you know the battery concept that they have in Atlanta, but that's what it's going to look like you know, out the left field wall at the, at the supposed new stadium. Excited? How am I supposed to get excited for anything right now considering the stadium? <laughs> I don't even know if this thing's going up still. It's not. It all just it's until then. It's all talk for me. It's all talk. 
in our annual wrap-up question, what Springsteen song best describes last season? Tougher than the rest. Yeah, okay. And for this season, wait for it, Thunder Road. I'm not a Springsteen guy, so these songs well, are going over my head. Thunder Road is the story of um, Bruce, I guess, you would, as, as one taking his girl, kind of a Rosalita feel to it. If I'm thinking, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it has a, as, a as, as I think about it, I'm thinking about the lyrics now. The whole thing is leaving town, like leaving on Thunder Road. <laughs> it's, as I think about the lyrics. Are you foreshadowing like, something? Yeah. <laughs> To roll the window down to home. Yeah. Yeah. That's leaving, leaving town. <laughs> well, there we'll have to, I'll break that down more on tomorrow's show. I'll get all the lyrics out and maybe, maybe the guitar too. <laughs> well, there's a tease for tomorrow. All right. Uh, big thanks to Ronnie Barber for stopping by here. We'll post that interview for you. If you missed it, you can always go back and watch it on uh, YouTube or the podcast as well. You can listen to that as well. We're going to go enjoy some of this Valspar beautiful weather here. Come on out and join us here. Tickets easy to get. Come on down uh, to Innisbrook. It's fabulous. We'll see you tomorrow.